definition of intelligence is not knowledge but imagination. Before moving on to today's event, let's just have a small recap of day one of third student research congress. Before uh, it started with some electrifying and fueling words from our chief guest Dr. Anuradha Majukundar ma'am and also some inspiring words from our principal ma'am Dr. Murina Moomin and from our ECG dignitaries Dr. Nyanadeva Bhatsa and Dr. Parisad Ejizana ma'am. It was followed by brilliant research work presented by our PG and UG, our PG and PhD students. For today, we will be having astounding poster presentations by the PhD, PG and UG students. The session will be carried out in two halves. First, we will be having the posters by the PhD and the PG students and in the second half, we will be having the poster presentations by the UG students. The judges for the poster presentation uh, will be the first judge for today is Dr. Swati Mittal Ma'am. Ma'am is currently associated with Al Amin College of Pharmacy, Bangalore, as professor in HOD in Department of Pharmacology. Ma'am has also been associated to some reputed institutes like VES College of Pharmacy, SPP SPTM, NMIMS University, and CU Shah College of Pharmacy as a lecturer. She has also completed her PhD from CU College of Pharmacy, SNDT Women's University. She has several research publications to her name in national and international journals. Ma'am has also delivered many lectures. Some of them are on tablets, capsules, and pharmacopoeias to the trainees of Sandoz Limited at Knowledge Cell Kalva, Executive Development Program in Basics and Applications of Pharmacokinetics in Drug Development at VES College of Pharmacy, a two-day seminar in Advances in Pharm Formulation Development and Overview organized by Yadavra Tasgaukar Institute of Pharmacy. Advances in oral drug delivery at RR College of Pharmacy, Bangalore. She has obtained several research grants, totaling more than 6 lakhs INR from several agencies. Some of them are Chemist Medicare Limited from the formulation development of controlled release oral suspensions of macrolide, uh, macrolide antibiotics, Mumbai University for the project entitled Evolution of, Evolution of Different Penetration Enhancers for the transdermal delivery of tramadol hydrochloride, Mumbai University for formulation development and evaluation of na nasal drug delivery systems, Crest Cellulose Limited for functional evaluation of excipients. MAM has completed a consultancy project on determination of neuropathy by measurement of nerve conduction velocity in diabetic rats and another project on evaluation of myopathy diabetic rats by measurement of ECG. She has guided about 30 M farm students. Our second judge for today is Dr. Sarika Vaikarma. Ma'am is currently associated with SPP SPTM, SVKM NMIMS Mumbai as an associate professor. Ma'am is a pharma professional with 18 years rich experience of industry and academia. Also, currently has been working on various industry projects. She has completed her B farm from Bhartiya Vidhapit College of Pharmacy, Kolhapur, and M farm from Pune College of Pharmacy, Bhartiya Vidhapit Deem University. Pune and her PhD from SVKM's NMIMS University, Mumbai. She has been associated with R&D department with CIPLA LTD and Macloids Pharma LTD for 6.5 years. But she was she has worked on formulation development of various dosage forms for regulatory and semi-regulatory markets and successfully completed technology transfer of the developed products for commercial translation. From almost last 20 years, she is associated with NMIMS Mumbai and has been working on novel drug delivery systems, nanotechnology based formulations, particle engineering in the area of formulation development. She has published more than 55 papers in reputed journals with cumulative impact factor of more than 177 with H index of 17 and I10 index of 21. She is the recipient of government research grant from CSIR India, Rajiv Gandhi Science and Technology Commission Maharashtra, ICM, Government of India, and NMIMS Research Seed Grant. Our third judge for today is Dr. R.T. Prabhu Ma'am. 
Ma'am is currently associated with SV Games Dr. Banuben Nanavati College of Pharmacy, Mumbai as Associate Professor in HOD, Department of Quality Assurance. She has completed B Pharm and M Pharm and her PhD in Pharmaceutical Chemistry from Bombay College of Pharmacy, Mumbai. She has academic experience of 10 years and industry experience of 12 years. Ma'am has published many research and review articles in reputed national and international journals. Ma'am also has a patent in preparation of 3N disubstituted naphthalene 3 carboxamides as EP2 receptor agonist to her credit. She has also received grants totaling more than 50 lakhs INR from many government and non government agencies. Some of them are. Selected for a grant of rupees 24 lakhs from under TSC Women Scientist Scientist Scheme for research, research in basics and applied sciences. And applied sciences. Recipient, of research, Recipient of research grant of rupees 50,000 50, by University of Mumbai for the project Docking Synthesis in SAR Strength of Mitotic Kinesis EG5 inhibitors for anti cancer activity. Recipient of research grant of rupees 8 lakhs sanctioned by Department of Biotechnology Government of India for the project proposal for scope platform for screening of potential anti cancer compounds. She is the member of the editorial review board of the International Journal of Pharmaceutical Chemistry and Analysis. Ma'am also has been reviewer for several journals. Some of them are Indian Journal of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Indian Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Journal of Biomolecular Structure and Dynamics, Taylor and Francisco. She is the life member of NMR Society, Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, APTI, and Indian Pharmaceutical Association, IPA. I would like to welcome our judges with a small uh, with a small gesture of giving your bouquet. Thank you, judges. A hearty welcome to all the judges. Thank you, Swati, madam. Welcome. Moving on. I know. I know. Uh, welcome Sarika madam, welcome Swetha, uh, Swati madam and uh, Aarti madam. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Thank you madam. Thank you ma'am, good morning. Good morning, thank you. Yes, go ahead madam. Just, just one, one thing means you know we need to make clear actually some of the participants they have not changed their uh, name to code so for now we will only call them where we have quotes uh, those who have just kept their name please discuss with the technical committee they might be facing problems so technical committee will tell them what to do but we cannot uh, take anyone with the name right so you are not allowed to show your name okay so those who are facing difficulty in changing name please contact uh, technical team they will so we'll call uh, those who are there with the code, poster code, not the name. Okay, thank you very much. Please can. I know all the participants and even our audience are in anticipation of the poster presentation competition and why not? As it is said, research is the way of creating new knowledge and today is all about that. The presentations are going to aid us in acquiring knowledge about some amazing work done by our researchers. Before moving on, I would like the participants to take the note of instructions. Rename yourself as per the allotted code, if not already done. Participants cannot reveal their name or any affiliation. Each presenting author will be given a time of two minutes for the presentation. Follow the time limit and kindly do not exceed. Only the presenting author will be allowed to answer in the Q&A session. Each participant is requested to stay alert for their roll call. With the permission of the judges, I would like to start the session. Yes, please. Yes, I think you can go ahead. Okay, ma'am. Uh, judges, I hope everyone has received their scorecards. Yes, we have. Yes. Okay. 
I would now like to call P02 for the presentation. P02. Okay. Can you please share your poster? Oh, uh, should we share? Due to your mic is off. Can you be a bit loud? Pew to your mic is off. Now is it audible, ma'am? Yes, now we can hear. Yes, ma'am. You can start. Not can't hear now. PO2, you are again on. I guess okay. Now it can start. PO2, please, please proceed. You will only get two minutes. Facing any problems, you can share your poster afterwards. Is PO2 be ready? Are you ready? PO3? Call wala list hai kya? Number ki saath wala list hai kya? PO6 na ho? 6 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 na ho? Okay. 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 Pio six. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. You are ready, right? Pio six. Please change your name. Like rename your name by the code name you are given. Yes. Uh, I am having my poster where I have uh, written the code name. Shall I share that? No, you should also join the MPS teams by the code name only. Please rename your name. Ma'am, am I audible now? Uh, yes, uh, yes, PO2, you are audible. You're audible. Should we share, Should we share your poster? Yes, ma'am, yes. that will be good. Okay. okay. The sharing. The sharing. Okay. okay, your poster has been shared. You can start. You can start. Yes. 
गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो टॉपिक फॉर माई पोस्टर प्रेजेंटेशन इज डिजाइन डेवलपमेंट एंड इन विट्रो कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ डोसीटेक्सिल लोडेड टीपीजेस पोलैक्सोमर वनिटेड मिक्स माइसेल्स फॉर इम्प्रूव कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट सो कमिंग टू द इंट्रोडक्शन डोसीटेक्सिल इज अ बीसीस क्लास फॉर ड्रग विच इज प्रैक्टिकली इनसोलिबल इन वॉटर इट इज यूज इन ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ वेरियस कैंसर बट इन दिल साइकल इट इज टॉक्सिक टू ऑल द डिवाइडिंग सेल्स इन ह्यूमन बॉडी सो वी आर प्लानिंग वी हैव प्लान टू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू द माइसेस विच विल इंक्रीज द ड्रग सोलिबिलिटी डिक्रीज टॉक्सिसिटी प्रोलॉन्ग द सर्क्यूलेशन टाइम एंड इनहांस द पेनिट्रेशन इन टू द टिश्यू एंड हैव द एबिलिटी टू टारगेट सो द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ आवर वर्क वॉज टू स्टडी डिजाइन डेवलप एंड इवेल्युएट टोसीटेक्सिल लोडेड टीपीजेस एंड फोलैक्सोमर वन एटेड मिक्स माइसेस सो हियर वी हैव यूज टू पॉलीमर्स दैट इज टीपीजीएस एंड फोलैक्सोमर वन एटी एट फॉर द इम्प्रूव कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट सो वी हैव यूज थ्री रेस टू टू फैक्टोरियल डिजाइन फ्रॉम विच वी हैव गॉट द नाइन बैचेस out of which the f6 batch which is having the high percent entrapment efficiency and low particle size was selected as the optimized batch moving further we have done the tame analysis to state how the micelles are and here in the tame images we can see that there are self assembled mixed micelles which are well distributed and are spherical shaped particles which are having essential wall surrounding the axis center so moving further we have also done the hemolysis study which was carried on the human blood and there we found that plain drug is having plain dts which is first one it is having more hemolysis that it gives more cells and the f6 batch which is showing the less hemolysis so we can say that it reduces the micelles the conversion of drug from plain drug to micelles it reduces the uh, toxicity to the normal cells further we have also studied the release how it is released so we can find that in the pure plain drug it is having a fast release and in case of in mix- okay ma'am shall i continue in one yes this continued in one minute so oh, yes so we can see that uh, the drug release also is less so it targets the cancer cells so from this study we can conclude that whatever the, we have uh, formulated the drug in the micelles it gives us good results and it targets the cancer cells and reduces the side effects thank you thank you po2 the session is now open for q and a so what is the ic50 value of drug and uh, your uh, formulation Uh, ma'am, IC50 value of drug is 0.01051, and for our for- formulation, we have found it to be 0.00122. So there is reduction in the IC50 value. What it means? Oh, uh, so it means that is significant higher cytotoxicity. That it will kill the more number of cancer cells. Can you elaborate a little bit more on your uh, formulation optimization parameters? Oh yes, ma'am. So for formulation optimization, we have used uh, the uh, dependent variables where concentration of TPJ, that is polymer one, and concentration of polyisomer one eighty eight, which is uh, second polymer. So depending on various concentrations, we have taken the independent variables which were percent entrapment efficiency and particle size. So for uh, targeting, we need more entrapment of the drug. So one uh, the one which is having the highest entrapment efficiency and less particle size is required so that the cells, uh, the drug, that my cells will. Will get uh, entrapped in the cancerous cell for more prolonged time, and it will also reduce the ERP re- effect. So for that, less particle size is required. So one combination which gives gives the higher entrapment efficiency and less particle size, it was selected. Okay. Are you proposing this by which uh, this formulation to be given by which group? Oh, it will be given by intravenous group, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think that is fine with this, uh, with the with this uh, uh, poster. I think we can move on. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Pio too. Now I would like to call PO six. 
PO6? Yes, ma'am. Shall I share? Okay. Can you please switch on your camera? Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, we'll share. Okay. No, your presentation has been shared. You can start. Shall I start? Yeah, please start. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Ma'am, I'm not able to see the contents properly. Uh, but we can see. So if you have the poster in front of you, just explain. We can see the poster on the screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you have only two minutes. So we have already seen the poster. Just give us the highlight. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, my topic is N silico drug design of P3D pyrimidine for CDK4 inhibitory activity, and the target is breast cancer. Uh, as cancer is the second leading cause of death worldwide, like millions of deaths are happening and millions of cases are emerging out. So the objective is the as the drugs, new drugs like placebo and ribociclips, they are CDK4 inhibitors, but they are showing the severe side effects like neutropenia that is fatal. So there is a need to develop new derivatives to overcome this side effect. So the structural optimization study is carried out towards the ribociclib in this paper uh, to produce the new molecules. Principal is uh, CDK as they are involved in the important process like RNA processing, flow refreshing, and they recently emerged out as a promising drug target. Uh, they uh, perform G1 arrest and uh, they are important. Uh, they are emerged out and as a the methodology. So with the introduction we know, can you explain your methodology? Because you only have one minute more. Yes, ma'am. So, in QSR result, we have found that uh, 2D and 3D QSR R square and Q square value were above 0 0.87, and the following descriptors were generated. Uh, looking at the structure, we can see according to the 3D QSR study, we can know where the substitution can be like X1. Electronegative group should be present, and in X2, there should be no substitution, and the linker and the R should be a less bulky group. Coming to the graph, LMO plot and white scramble plot, it is showing that the model generated is stable and a good model. Following the conclusion, uh, the current study designed and synthesized a novel series of substituted pyrelo 23D pyrimidine compounds for a cancer treatment where the X1 should be of fluorine or hydroxy or any electronegative group for the better activity than the ribosecret and X2 should not be uh, substituted and L should be a carbonyl group and R should be a substituted pi uh, piperazine group like a methoxy group. So firstly, uh, based on the Q uh, QSR results, the series were formed and the docking was... Hello, am I audible? Yes, Since your time is up. Yes, half a minute more, uh, half a minute more. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So based on the QSAR stu uh, study uh, result, the series were developed and the docking was done on the hundreds of compounds. And this five compounds came out to be a best with the binding affinity than that of the standard. And further uh, proceeding with the ADME, uh, everyone have followed the uh, Lipinski rule and there were no compound found to be toxic. So based on that, the con conclusion is abstracted. And this is the future scope that the molecules can be synthesized and following are the key references. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, have you synthesized these compounds and verified no, the activity? Uh, no, ma'am, not yet. Okay. Uh, what is the software you use for 2D QSR and 3D QSR? QSR in, ma'am. QSR in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you, can you tell what are the descriptors for the 2D QSR? Which the software gave you? Uh, Ma'am, delta epsilon B and uh, then hydrogen count and TCO3 uh, that is showing distance between the carbon and oxygen. So from from these uh, from these uh, descriptors, how do you uh, I mean how 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 can you translate it into a design? Uh, Ma'am, as the that uh, delta epsilon and that hydrogen count came negative, so uh, there should be no substitute. Uh, there should be no hydrogen present. Means substitution should be present in the nucleus. So as we can see, the uh, in the basic nucleus, unsaturation is there. And uh, looking at the delta epsilon B, it is uh, showing that the uh, compound should be. Uh, 
consist of the unsaturation and uh, looking at the hydrogen count we can uh, know that the substitution should be present likely x1 x2 and linker and r group we can see over there and uh, looking at the tco3 uh, descriptors it is showing that the distance between the oxygen that is carbonyl group and any other carbon should be three bonded so this was on the basis of 2d and ma'am coming to the 3d descriptors uh, the descriptors like e 69 so that is a uh, electrostatic descriptors it is came negative so it is showing that the group must be a uh, electro negative favorable and uh, coming to the s1215 descriptors that is negative it is showing that the group should be less bulky so the linker and the r substitution it should be a less bulky but uh, following the molecular docking studies i got to know that the r should be a uh, if it is a piperary piperazine bean the binding affinity is found to be a more okay so even after your docking you are still iterating the design yes ma'am okay do you plan to synthesize this compound no ma'am uh, not yet but there, there is a plan for the future yes ma'am Okay. Okay. Any questions from uh, other judges? No, no. It is already covered, so I don't have any questions. Yeah. Oh, okay. thank you, P.O.C. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, P.O.C. Thank you, judges. Now I would like to call P.O. One. Okay. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are audible. Thank you. Your poster has been shared. You can start. okay good morning to all i am i will be delivering the topic fabrication of surface stellar carbon quantum dots for sensing of reduced glutathione in human serum samples and hela cell imaging so in the introduction i will uh, highlight the need of the study biothavel such as glutathione cysteine homocysteine they play an important role in reversible redox processes and cellular functions so the uh, normal cell normal cellular level for gsh is 1 to 10 millimole and the altered levels are associated with many diseases like alzheimer disease uh, resistance to cancer cells immunotherapy while deficiency of gsh causes suppression of immune system functions and problems of aging so uh, already the existing methodologies suffer various complicated procedures and there must therefore there is a need to develop a highly sensitive a uh, method or probe that can be used for sensing of reduced glutathione so here in we uh, synthesize uh, carbon quantum dots by using a natural precursor a green pea shells without using any chemical or reducing agent and further we have uh, functionalized it using polyethylene amine surface functionalizing agent uh, so that uh, the quantum yield of that material has been increased so here the methodology has been uh, depicted the so synthesis of gpcds and for synthesis of gpbcds further the result and discussion shows the three different images of uh, synthesized gpbcds at short uv long uv and visible light the uh, uv and fpr images uh, predict that the functionalization has been uh, done properly and in the fpr itself we can uh, visualize that the amide bond has been uh, existed after functionalization uh, the carbon dots with polyethylene amide then there is a, a sensing mechanism shown in the image uh, in the scheme pattern that uh, the carbon dots are in the switch on mode after addition of copper ions there is a quenching mechanism occur which is called as turn off and then after addition of the reduced glutathione there is regain in the fluorescence intensity of the material which is called as turn off on mechanism for sensing of uh, reduced glutathione further the data potential of quantum uh, data potential has been uh, uh, depicted in the figure which confirms the formation of gppi cds from cds uh, then effect of uh, fluorescence intensity uh, fluorescence behavior on different time, sir. okay just uh, i will uh, conclude that uh, in the hela cell images also Uh, the probe uh, confirmed that it it has ability to cause the cell membrane as, as well as nuclear membrane and in the final conclusion uh, there is a limited protection noted for 23 nanomolar in the human serum sample and mtd as a confirm the by comparison compatibility of the probe thank you thank you viewers the session is now open for q and a Okay. Any comment on toxicity of uh, carbon quantum dots? Uh, Ma'am, uh, so in MTD assay, uh, we confirmed that uh, the uh, concentration up to 100 microgram per ml of GPPCD is uh, 
killing the cell up to 90 percent, uh, uh, kill, uh, having a cellular growth of up to 90 percent. Means only 10 percent killing has been observed. So uh, we have uh, performed the MTD assay and uh, the cell imaging uh, study using 100 microgram per ml of the uh, uh, GPPS disc, which is uh, very uh, less toxic. We can uh, as compared to the previous studies. Can you uh, elaborate better on uh, cell images? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, in the images, uh, the untreated uh, cells, uh, bright field images, and the Hoches triple four three two dye has been utilized for the uh, differentiation of uh, uh, cellular material and uh, nuclear membrane or uh, nucleus of the cell. In the GBBS it is treated cells, we can uh, observe that the material or the probe has been uh, crossing the cellular membrane as well as the nuclear membrane. Uh, the blue color and green color images in the B4, uh, it confirms that the uh, material has ability to cross the cell membrane as well as nuclear membrane. So uh, effectively, uh, we can uh, perform the detection of uh, glutathione in the cellular level also. So this uh, CELA, uh, confocal microscopy of uh, HELA cell images confirm the uh, uh, cellular uptake of GPPS it is very well. Okay, but uh, what I remember is glutathione uh, T half is very less even in the human body, right? Sir, uh, Yes, ma'am. So, uh, is your formulation having any advantage uh, to overcome that limitation? Because uh, actually, ma'am, quite uh, challenging for that. Uh, actually, we have performed in human serum uh, sample also. So, in the real uh, uh, sample, we just uh, collected the human serum. And uh, immediately we have performed the sensing of reduced glutathione and we got the better results. You didn't stabilize it and then you You didn't stabilize, right? Or did you stabilize and uh, perform this? Uh, the, uh, the probe itself is having a uh, stability up to three months. Uh, it is in the uh, solid material and after dissolving it in the simple water, uh, distilled water, deionized water, we can have this uh, fluorescent intensity of that material. Last question, that have you kept a group of unfunctionalized, because since you are saying the surface functionalized uh, carbon dots are giving you activity, so have you done any, uh, while doing other studies, have you kept that control group with the non-functionalized uh, dots as well? Uh, for, uh, with respect to the uh, material, that material which we have synthesized, uh, surface functionalized, we have uh, studied with that material only. No any uh, unfunctional material has been studied. Okay. Ma'am, do you have any questions for that? No, no, nothing from my side. We can move on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Now I would like to call PO7 for the presentation. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Your poster has been shared. You can start. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, all of you. Today I am going to present on formulation and evaluation of herbal antiacnegen using a functional excipient. As we all know, acne is the largest disease in the world. Therefore, there is a need to find something a safer and effective way to treat the acne. Mainly, acne are seen in the puberty teenagers among the older people, but it's mainly seen in teenagers. So, in market there are many formulations are available to treat the acne but these are the synthetic and cause side effects so there is a need to find something safer and effective way so we try to make pomegranate gel by using the pomegranate peel extract so uh, we here uh, uh, so we use a pomegranate peel extract which has a main major component quinic algin which shows the antimicrobial activity so that can be used in a gel formulation for the prepare for formulation we select a gel because gel uh, is prepared without any oil so it can be used and uh, used very easily and it can suitable for the all skin types so uh, the our aim of the uh, aim of our formulation is to develop a therapeutic effective topical gel for the penetration of skin to prevent the acne Pomegranate shows good antimicrobial activity, and uh, we prepare a gel by using a two uh, by using two ingredients that only a pomegranate peel extract and the functional excipient. As a functional excipient, we use Nomocot CG, which is a functional excipient. 
so by by using this we made a different formulations containing different um, peel extract and the gelling agent in the weight by weight volume from this we get a three base formulations which shows a good viscosity and the thickening agent so by using these three formulation further we evaluated the formulation we studied the different formula evaluation test and from all this we conclude that the pomegranate peel extract shows good anti uh, anti bacterial activity and which can be used to treat that acne thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you for your seven the session is now open for q and a seven specific bacteria responsible for acne sorry ma'am i can't hear you just uh, can you please repeat the question which specific bacteria is responsible for acne ma'am staphylococcus aureus and uh, probacterium acne so have you tested against these bacteria yes ma'am uh, actually we tested against the staphylococcus aureus and the standard bacteria and we compare their results now when i'm speaking Okay. Uh, so, does your what is the shelf life of your formulation? No, 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 no. Three months, ma'am. No, no, no. We are still studying on it, but uh, it uh, by using its uh, uh, normal part CG, which is a functional excipient, uh, it can be stable for the three months. In further study, uh, we can make it stable for a long time, up to six months or more than it. Hello, Bhumi. Yes, Bhumi, madam, you can ask. hello ha okay yes, sir yeah no actually you know i was having a problem with my mic i felt that my voice is not being heard yeah so yeah i was just asking you your norm cot as a functional excipient what is the function that this excipient is performing only as a gelling agent i think yes uh, yes ma'am it uh, it is a viscosity modifier uh, modifier it is a thickening agent Okay. and uh, it fact as emollient okay so that itself does not have any anti acne property anti acne property no ma'am no have you tested that have you tested that yes ma'am we tested it it does not have any uh, anti acne property okay So what about the preservative? Does your formulation require any preservative? Yeah. No, ma'am. It does not require any preservative. Why is that? Ma'am, because by using its a uh, functional excipient, it can be stable for a long time. And we also studied the antimicrobial activity. While uh, we store it for a long time, uh, it does not show any antimicrobial activity in a gel. Or so, therefore, there is a no need to add any preservative. is there is a nomopart cj as a uh, functional excipient so your contention is that any anti antiseptic uh, on pen is does not require any preservative that's what you're saying uh, no. uh, ma'am if there is a functional excipient that we use that is a nomopart cj if we use then there is a no need to add any uh, uh, preservative in it or any other excipient because it itself act as a, as i told earlier it uh, it's a fact as a stabilizer emollient uh, viscosity modifier thickening agent so there is a no need if you don't mind can you tell us what is nomocort cg can you elaborate uh, yes yes ma'am nomocort cg is a gelling agent which uh, uh, which is a mixture of two gum that is xanthan and gum and uh, uh, serotonia silica Okay. Uh, I am done from my side. Uh, I am done from my side. All right, we can go ahead. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, PO seven. Thank you, judges. Now I would like to call PO eight for the presentation. PO eight. PO eight. 
years management of psoriasis and psoriasis uh, moving to introduction psoriasis is a uh, causes inflammation and red fish as it is an autoimmune disorder now selenium nanoparticles in the selenium uh, selenium will be act as a uh, drug and in this nanoparticle form and nanoparticle form and the hyaluronic acid which be uh, which will target the cd4 receptor in the psoriatic skin and ascorbic acid act as a reducing agent now in the uh, aim and objective uh, the aim is to design optimize and evaluate the ha uh, selenium nanoparticle loaded optical hydrogel and the uh, objective are the uh, two optimize to design and optimize a one part scalable reproducible manufacturing process with the help of qbd based approach now to the uh, rational aim uh, as soon as you have only 2 minutes so please just summarize part we are seeing the pre poster you only have 1 minute more so just summarize your finding yes okay uh, in the experimental method in the experimental methodology uh, we use the qbd based approach where we uh, the target qtpp was the particle size uh, pdi and zeta potential and with the help of risk assessment we have optimized the batches and in the synthesis uh, firstly hyaluronic acid and sodium selenide was ta- was taken and uh, with the proper stirring time before addition of ascorbic acid and after addition of ascorbic acid we optimized this and the selenium particles was observed was flaky in nature by lyophilization in the characterization of uh, ha selenium nanoparticles uh, in the zeta sizer we, fa- we found the average size in the range of 187 nanometer which is uh, which is which fits to the 150 to 1 200 nanometer and in the zeta potential to minus 13 millivolt and the ftir we found the conjugation of ha H- with selenium nanoparticle which confirm it is conjugated and they uh, also we uh, did the edx study edx analysis where we found the elemental uh, amount and uh, in the hr time image which within the size range uh, in the formulation and develop uh, formulation development we use a carbobol uh, aqua S- sf1 as a gelling agent uh, and other uh, excipient like bisphenol methylparaben and do da uh, as a EO. Uh, okay uh, moving to the con- uh, conclusion part we have designed a scale- simple scalable and reproducible one pot synthesis method with the help of cd with the help of uh, qbd approach and uh, hydrogel will be function as a uh, aqueous system to uh, enhance the uh, to enhance the action of uh, selenium nanoparticles and to reduce the symptoms of psoriasis uh, thank you thank you for the session is now open for key one so this how have you done this in vivo evaluation on sorry in vivo evaluation can you explain Uh, actually ma'am in vivo evaluation is on going on going uh, firstly we have uh, uh, firstly we have induced the psoriasis with the hel- uh, with the help of uh, with with the help of i am mco and then the psoriasis was uh, developed and the treatment is on going uh, with the help of hydrogel hydrogel okay inico mild skin induces psoriasis Yes, yes ma'am. What is the therapeutic use of this ointment? Sorry? Uh, because in the poster you have shown that Imicord is Imicquee Mod Cream. So what is the therapeutic use of that cream? Uh, actually ma'am, uh, it is, uh, we have used it as a, just for the uh, inducing agent for the psoriasis. Uh, it's a therapeutic role. Uh, it's a therapeutic role in which uh, cells are in the cells are coming cells cutting okay but can you repeat i didn't get your answer planning to do kinetic or dynamic passes for and are you going to evaluate sorry in the sorasis in the dynamic what are you going to evaluate passes for how are you going to score it Uh, actually when in, in we were studying we will uh, we will uh, know that the uh, the uh, our uh, formulation is treatable uh, is treating to a psoriasis or not just to check okay. so how are you going to observe it physical <laughs> observation yes ma'am and uh, after after that uh, we will check the uh, pharmacokinetic parameters so in that observation there is an index are you aware of that 
team skill. Passis 4 is used, so maybe still your study is on, so you can apply that Passis 4 to the observation <laughs> for dynamic. Okay, and since it is your cubic, uh, you are saying that you have already done the cubic based approach, what is your design space? Uh, actually, ma'am, the design space is uh, between uh, minus one to uh, minus one to one, where I have kept the uh, uh, concentration of uh, uh, ascorbic acid uh, and hyaluronic acid. Yeah, but what is the working space? In which range it is? Uh, as per software, what range you got? Uh, ma'am, minus one to uh, minus one to one, ma'am. Okay, okay. And in kinetic study, what are you going to observe? Uh, kinetic study, ma'am, uh, I will do the uh, clearance uh, and half life. But uh, being the topical, uh, it, is, it is going to act systemically there? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. My questions are over. Uh, as Sarika ma'am said, your uh, selenium has a topical effect or does it have, does it penetrate and go into the skin and have a systemic effect? Yes ma'am, it, it, it has a systemic effect. Okay. All right. So you are going to study the pharmacokinetics of hyaluronic acid conjugated selenium nanoparticles only. Full pharmacokinetics you are going to study, all the parameters. Yes, Yes, ma'am. I think we are done with the so, so yes. you can go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Now I like to call PO13. PO13, are you ready for the PO13, are you ready for the presentation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please switch on. Okay. Please switch on your, your camera. <laughs> we have shared your poster. You can start. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, my poster code is P013. Uh, title is Synthesis and Testing of Anti-Infective Activity of Benzimidazole Derivative. Moving towards introduction, as you all know that benzimidazole, it is a heterocyclic aromatic compound. So, this uh, parent molecule is generally used for many other drugs uh, to treat many other diseases like uh, anti-ulcer, anthelmintic, antifungal and cardiovascular. So, here my poster is divided into three different parts. First one is the experimental work, then uh, another is the antioxidant activity and antimitotic activity. So, experimental work in uh, in this method, I had used orthophenyl diamine uh, in acidic condition with the help of aspirin to give this team one product. Here, aspirin, no one has taken uh, in uh, aspirin as a substituent molecule. So, I had used aspirin uh, as a substituent molecule. Uh, then, the scheme one, uh, scheme two, and scheme three products are obtained by using the scheme one uh, derivative by uh, in a uh, by using a managed space reaction to uh, give uh, scheme 2 and scheme 3 product. So, uh, all this activity is um, uh, all the um, both the products were uh, synthesized properly. Uh, then the uh, nature molecular formula, molecular weight, melting point is checked. The purity of both the sample was taken by using the uh, TLC. The single spot shows that uh, the uh, product is pure or not, and the functional group is attached or not properly. Uh, it is done by using the FTIR analysis. So moving towards the second part, in vitro anti uh, antioxidant activity. So this is done by using the uh, TPPH assay method. Here different concentration of both the derivatives and standard was uh, checked. Uh, so here you have to observe that as the concentration will get decreases, uh, sorry increases, so uh, the absorbance should get decreases. Ultimately our uh, IC50 value, that is uh, percent inhibition will also get increases. So IC50 value for both the compound and standard. I, I had used ascorbic acid as a standard. So um, you can see that uh, derivative 1 is showing good antioxidant activity as compared to derivative 2. Then, uh, so we can conclude uh, 
conclude that antioxidant activity of derivative one is good. So moving towards anti-mitotic activity, um, if the uh, as you all know that um, uh, here prophase, anaphase, telophase, uh, different different uh, cell dividing cells are uh, growth uh, in the uh, growth um, stem growth cells are there. So if um, these cells will get um, decreases, the number of counts of cells will get decreases by no no. When we con contact our, the onion roots with uh, our derivative, so uh, this uh, derivative will show a good antimitotic activity. Here you can see that prophase, anaphase, uh, telophase, uh, the uh, here you can see the abnormalities are also uh, given over there. So we can conclude overall that uh, both the derivatives are performed uh, successfully, derivatized successfully, and compound one is showing good antioxidant and antimitotic activity towards uh, compound two. So we can conclude uh, all by this that uh, compound one is good. Uh, compound one is potent drug as compared to compound two. Thank you. Your typhus says anti infective activity, hmm. but you have uh, shown you tested for uh, cytotoxicity, no? anti mitotic. Yes, ma'am. Why have you done that? Ma'am, actually, I had done anthelmintic, antifungal, and antimicrobial activity also, but in poster, I can include all that things. That's why I had uh, just included and only two activity antimitotic and antioxidant. Uh, so, your title should have been accordingly modified, no? What you are presenting? Uh, yes, ma'am. And another thing, you're talking about antioxidant activity. Yeah. And usually antioxidant is a protective action, right? And then you're saying yes, it's also an anti-infective. Can you justify that? You have tested what you're claiming on the title and what you're saying. See, when you say anti-infective, it is against an infecting bacteria, microorganism, right? You have checked? Yes, yes. Against microorganism. When you say antioxidant, it's a completely different and Madden says protective activity. When you say anti-mitotic, it actually means cytotoxic. Okay, so, so if you're planning to work on this, get your uh, get some clarity in what you want to do. I have only one thing to point out. Your uh, team one product uh, yes, I mean, yes. the reactions are not adding up to your product, there's an extra methylene group. Sorry, ma'am. On your on your benzimidal gel, you have put pH two in it. Where the pH two has come from? Uh, scheme one. Scheme one. Get your structure. Ma'am, I didn't get the question. for you. One more question for you. Are the same scheme? Uh, if you are reacting your uh, benzimidal gel with sulfonylamide. How can you be sure that it is the it is connecting on the NH2 side and not the sulfonamide side? Can you explain how? Remember, you said that. Ah, so how can you explain how in the SPIR uh, you were able to confirm that this is the product form? Ma'am, by using SPIR, the functional group that ranges, I had concluded that uh, by pro, uh, that the sulfonylamide group is attached over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, no more questions from me. Yes, we can move on. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, judges. Now, I would like to call PO 14 for the presentation. Hello? PO 14? Yes. Yes, we can have an Yes. Yes. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, today, I'm going to present my uh, research topic or presentation on the topic of uh, formulation and evaluation of mucadism nasal drug delivery of ropinirole hydrochloride for the brain targeting in Parkinson's disease. 
as we all know that uh, i'll just uh, justify my title with the uh, uh, with few um, words uh, in few words that as we know that uh, parkinson disease is a, a progressive disorder and dopinirol is used as anti parkinson drug but it has a low uh, viability so that uh, i uh, i'll choose the nasal drug delivery uh, system for the uh, for the better viability uh, here my uh, my pr uh, presentation divided into three parts that is uh, formulation evaluation uh, formulation optimization evaluation so moving towards the formulation part Uh, uh in formulation part uh, uh, before going to formulation uh, i did uh, some um, uh, pre formulation studies then uh, i go for the identification of drug then uh, then i move towards the drug excipient compa uh, compatibility study and that uv visible spectro uh, spectroscopy uh, used then uh, preparation of stock solution uh, and uh, standard calibration curves of propinerol hydrochloride then i move this towards the formulation because we know the method we have seen the method you only have one minute more tell us okay so requirement thank you okay ma'am okay the aim of my research was to formulate optimize the uh, formulate optimize and dopinol hydrochloride polymer nanoparticle by using the ionic gelation technique for nasal drug delivery for preparation method was optimized by using a uh, box mankin design by employing kitosin solution gawar gum concentration and surfactant where uh, concentration as an independent variable and uh, and whereas the uh, encapsulation efficiency and nuclear addition of the uh, formulation were selected as a dependent variable the physical chemical compatibility of the drug and the polymer studied by uh, dsc and ir uh, method and it was suggested that the drug uh, and other excipients are compatible with each other the nanoparticle evaluated by of uh, evaluated for entrapment efficiency and drug content in vitro release study and then entrapment efficiency and drug content uh, of all uh, formulations was found found in range that 65 or uh, 65% uh, to 84% and 60% to uh, 76% respectively uh, and uh, that's all in your time sir what's the problem there is laptop the session the session is now open for q and a I can't see in the poster. For how long we have done the in vitro release study? The time, ma'am. Yes. What? Yes. Poster. Poster. I mean, 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 I yes yeah. release studies ha yeah. so duration duration in where it is results 2 hours 4 hours 8 hours ma'am overall health which are the evaluation sir evaluation 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 <clears throat> yeah here it is 84.18 percent i could see but it was done for how long it was for 8 hours ma'am but i see something day 1 day 11 what is this stability yeah this is for stability ma'am all right yeah yeah optimized value 8 hours all right okay so you are just Uh, proposing that this is for brain delivery or are you going to verify this that from nasal it is going definitely going to the brain actually this was just proposal ma'am thank you so animal study is pending or no no ma'am i'm not going to study any uh, animal study So, what concentration you are proposing for mucoid agents there? That also can't be seen. Where it is? Concentration of which, ma'am? Mucoid agent. Sorry, ma'am, I can't hear you. Mucoid agent. 
You have made a mucoadhesive gel. How are you supposed to apply it? So you know? Actually, it is in uh, ma'am. It is in uh, solution form, and when it uh, when it reaches the nose, sorry, ma'am. We can go move on to the next. No more questions from my side. Yeah, yeah let's move on. Thank you. Thank you, Pio Kogi. Thank you, judges. Now I would like to call Pio 15 for the presentation. Pio 15, are you ready? Hello? Yes, Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I'm out. Yes. Yes, you're audible. Yes, the presentation has been shared. You can start. Okay, so um, the topic for today's poster presentation is screening of the drug for central nervous system activity. Uh, since we all know depression is one of the leading causes of death today, and there are 280 million people of uh, people in this world who are affected with depression, and we are around 7 lakh people die with depression every year. Okay, because of the suicidal tendency. So now this is the topic which I have selected for uh, the poster presentation. So uh, as you can see, depression is one of the most frequently occurring psychiatric disorder. In this study, we investigated the antidepressant effects of terazosin uh, in the files using the chronic unpredictable mild stress model. And the effects of terazosin uh, uh, were seen and analyzed using the behavioral parameters uh, and the biochemical markers after the chronic stress terazosin treatment. And it was found that the terazosin treatment showed positive results uh, in the mice. So the aim and objective is that to evaluate the effect of terazosin on the experimental models of depression in mice and to evaluate its correlation with PGK1, that is the phosphoglycerate kinase 1, the neurotransmitters and the pro-inflammatory cytokines with the depression. So the rationale, I, uh, the uh, person who is there, can you please zoom the slide, the poster? Hello. Sorry. We can see the poster clearly, so you can just describe it. Okay, yeah, because as, as for the uh, I hope it is visible to you. The part says that the PGK1, which is there, it is an enzyme which is essential for the metabolism of glucose and to generate the ATP. Okay? So when glucose is metabolized, uh, it is getting converted into pyruvate and then further it enters into the Krebs cycle and from there it generates ATP. Okay, so that uh, glucose conversion into the ATP is uh, mediated by this enzyme, which is your PGK1. And terazosin acts as an agonist on this PGK1. And it increases the enzymatic activity of PGK1, thereby increasing the ATP production. And impaired ATP production or impaired energy metabolism is one of the causes of depression, or uh, which is found in the depre uh, depression brain. So the testing methodology, uh, using this rationally, we use terazosin as a drug uh, uh, with uh, different uh, dose of your, uh, dose treatments. So first we will see the experimental design which was there. The experimental design was the chronic unpredictable uh, mice which was given to the mice. Uh, which was given to the mice for <coughs> near around five weeks, and the last two weeks were the treatment period. Uh, the last two weeks. Hello, your time is up. You can continue. <laughs> you can continue. Your time is up. Okay. Okay. So uh, the basically the entire study te uh, tells us that uh, the terazosin which was given at 0.1 mg, 0.2 mg, and 0.4 mg doses IP showed greater uh, positive results and antidepressant uh, activity in the mice models of the depression at such low doses with least side effects. Thank you. Thank you, Pio. The session is now open for Okay. So I just have one question. Uh, so Rajasthan itself is an anti-hypertensive drug, huh? yes. an alpha yeah. and antagonist. So if, if it is given for depression in a person whose blood pressure is normal, it is called yeah. hypertension. 
Yeah, actually, uh, the thing is, the studies which we saw, the depression uh, doses which were given in the mice, it was 0.1 mg, 0.2 mg, and 0.4 mg, which were not capable of activating the alpha receptors which are present for, uh, or which are related to the hypertension. And uh, in case of us, uh, if we see about the depression patients, if you are talking about the person with depression and hypertension, the doses which we will be giving for terazosin will not be the doses which are capable of producing the uh, hypertensive side effects and hypertensive effects. Can you comment on its blood brain permeability Sorry? of terazosin? Can you comment on the blood brain permeability of terazosin? Because as an anti hypertensive, it can have peripheral action. Ma'am, can, can you be a bit louder? Can you can comment? Okay, yeah. Can you comment on its blood brain permeability of terazosin? Because it is an anti hypertensive, yeah. it supports the peripheral action. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it uh, it uh, crosses the blood brain barrier with the uh, use of the uh, passive or mediated diffusion. So, uh, the, uh, it is capable of crossing the blood brain barrier, but uh, using the saline and the mediators and the PGP proteins which are there, they are also there. But the thing is, uh, uh, the amount which reaches into the brain uh, can depend upon the solvents which are used for uh, the transport. Okay, thank you. And then thank you. Sarika, yeah, yeah. what is the uh, you have checked uh, the situation of the uh, 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 Hello? Hello? Yeah, comparatively, what is your observation for three different doses? Antidepressant doses, the study which was carried out in mice, we used very minor doses like 0.1 mg and 0.2 mg per kg of the dose. Like, so the dose was calculated per kg. The mice weight is literally in grams. So the dose which was given to the mice was uh, a very low dose. And at that dose also, terazosin showed really very positive effects. So we can say that it has some antidepressant like properties at this minor doses with that. I understand. I'm asking about the comparison of between the doses, intra-group comparison. Three different doses were given, right? Yeah, right. The 0.4 mg showed better effect as compared to 0.1, 0.1 mg, uh, the results which were seen. And uh, the three dose ranges showed significant increase in the antidepressant effects which were further evaluated using the behavioral parameters in vitro in vivo test. Okay. Actually, uh, what is the site of action? It's a brain? Uh, actually, it, uh, it, uh, in the mitochondria, it, uh, it uh, overcomes the ATP production due to ATP, uh, loss of the ATP. There is a decrease in the neuronal synapticity and uh, loss of ATP production and energy metabolism is one of the leading causes of depression and due to which uh, there is uh, some uh, anhedonia and other kind of symptoms. So this, this drug which was there, it increased the ATP level due to which the brain functioning was improved and the antidepressant effects were seen. Correct. So the uh, site of action is a brain. So you have yeah. given it intraperitoneally. So have you checked yes. uh, any kinetic of a kinetic study have you done? Uh, kinetic studies as such we haven't done it but uh, the doses were very minor so I guess uh, from my side it is done now so by no way you have yeah so you have not checked the penetration into the brain nowhere because you're talking about stress and interleukins and all these parameters that you have tested are yes. analyzed in what sample Yes, we have checked the, all the parameters like interleukin uh, 6, uh, interleukin 1 beta. Then we have also checked the serotonin and dopamine levels. Then we have uh, seen the sucrose preference test, tail suspension test, access photometer. Uh, all those results were uh, showing that yes, it causes some antidepressive action. So that indicates that the drug is penetrating the brain? Yes. Okay, thank you. I think we can move on. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I would now like to call PO 16 for the presentation. PO 16? Yes. We have shared your poster. Yeah. You can start. You yeah, my audible. It's the main finding because you only have two minutes. We are exceeding the time. Uh, if you uh, uh, describe the introduction, etc., a lot of time. So we've seen the poster. Just tell us your key findings. Yes. Can I start now? Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Today is my topic development and characterization of the novel of Hamid Nano Piper insert loaded with the dexam with the sodium phosphate for the management of dry eye disease. The chronic dry eye disease is presently treated with artificial tear and any anti inflammatory eye drops. The requirement of the frequent administration of this drop exhibits the poor patient compliance. The topical administration is the paper, the non invasive route of administration. However, the 90% of the currently available optimal formulation are eye drops that exhibit the poor ocular biosphere. The drug is the dexamethasone sodium phosphate, which is an anti-inflammatory drug. The nanofiber based ocular insert can increase the contact time between the drug and ocular tissue and to prolong the drug release due to their resemble with the extracellular matrix. The aim and objective, the aim is the development and characterization of the novel ophthalmic nanofiber insert with the dexamethasone sodium phosphate for the management of the dry disease. The objective is the formulating a nanofiber insert loaded with the dexamethasone sodium phosphate for each prolonged release and to carry out the HVO evaluation of the drug loaded nanofiber insert. The rationale is the nanofiber based sandwich type ocular insert in which the sandwich type the two outer layers are black which regulate the moisture and the prolong the release. The middle layer is the core layer which is loaded with the drug dexamethasone sodium phosphate. Experimental work, the upper layer and lower layer is made up of the HPMC and nucleotide area and the middle layer is the core layer which is made up of the gelosin and PBA polymer. The solution A method is to use the electrospinning techniques. This is the image of electrospinning. Electrospinning condition of the solutions, these are given. The flow rate is 0.34 ml per hour is maintained. The result and discussion say result is the nanofiber, these are the image which are the made up of the nanofiber based lapse insert which are elliptical in nature. The image of multi-layer nanofiber scaffold, the same image is also here. The upper layer, middle layer, lower layer the image is shown. The parameters and the result, physical appearance is the soft and smooth and the interaction efficacy is the 95.6 percent. I have performed the interview. Your time is up. You can, you can continue. Yeah. In vitro release, the medium is used high media and it shows the huge release of 5 hours. The XVO release is, uh, uh, we perform the diffusion medium is exercise goat cornea and which shows the 24 hours. Head cam study also performed the formulation which shows the non irritating Conclusion the present study demonstrates the successful fabrication of the multi layer nanofiber based ocular insert loaded with the dexamethasone sodium phosphate using the electronic techniques. Yes, thank you. Thank you, PO16. The session is now open for QA. Yes. How did you prove that your formulation is non irritating? And how? We performed the head cam study. Head cam study. Yes. Corneal toxicity uh, you need to carry out in the you are putting fibers into office server. Corneal toxicity is not required for irritation studies. Yes, yes. So have you performed the verbal studies? No. And one more thing, being a uh, dry eyes intro. The yes, acting uh, like tear secretion is, I think, test for uh, its efficacy. So uh, there is no mention of that test. Are you going to do that or something like that? UTM. Yes, we perform it. <laughs> we perform it. So what was the effect? No, no, we will perform. <laughs> And there, there's this paper I could see, multi-layer scaffold I could see. So how are you going to convert it into the insert? Like you just cut it in the shape. 
Sorry, ma'am. Not here. I I could see the scaffold. Yes. You are mentioning that you are doing it like insert, right? Or can we insert it? Yes. So how are you going to convert it? Like on the left hand side, I could see ocular insert. So you just cut it into that shape. Yes. Yes. We cut it. So once you place the insert, uh, vision will be blurred or uh, hampered, isn't it? No, it is soft in nature. What? No, it is soft in nature, elliptical in nature. So vision will not be hampered or blurred? Below the... These are the small. Okay. What is the size? Is a, thickness is a, about 0.48. Length. Length, Size. length, ma'am, length. 7 mm, sorry. 7 mm. So, 7 mm, if you insert it as ma'am was suggesting, asking, does it not hamper the vision? No. So, where are you? You've given the picture. I think it can be I. Where you have one type of uh, formulation for the treatment of dry eye syndrome. Usually yes. you, would, you would get eye drops. Huh? So are the inserts also available for treatment of dry eye disease? Sorry, ma'am. Are the ma'am. You ask me. Aap boli, aap boli. Dry eye syndrome means there is no tears formation in the eye. So usually you require lubrication by means of eye drops. So will this not irritate the eye? It is a dry insert. If you put it in the eye, will it not we irritate use the, the eye? Which maintain the moisture. The HPNC polymer which maintain the moisture. Okay. And dexamethasone, is it used or is it recommended for dry eye syndrome? Because it's a steroidal yes. drug. Is it recommended? Yes. yes. It is an okay. anti-inflammatory drug. Okay. Okay. I think, thank you. We can move on. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, PO16. Thank you, judges. Now, I would like to call PO22 for the presentation. PO22. Am I audible? Yes, you are yes, audible. audible. We have shared your poster. You can start. So, good afternoon, everyone. My topic for today is bioactivity guided evaluation of the traditional medicinal plants from the family leguminosa. So, as we can see, the flowering plants of the family, of the family Tritonium uh, pradinus, they have been administered as an expectorant and an analgesic, and hence they have been used in the anti as, as an anti-asthmatic drug. So, the results were various extracts and fractions were carried out from these uh, flowering plants and with their percentage yields. And they basically showed the alkaloidal and the flavonoid content, where the alkaloid content was found to be 0.2 micrograms and the flavonoid content was found to be 0.7. On doing the HPLC and the HPTLC analysis, it was basically showed that the HPTLC basically showed the presence of orphanentin and the biotanin A, which were the isoflavones and hence exhibiting the antioxidant activity with their respective RF values. And the HPLC method also showed these two drugs with their respective RT values. On performing the in vitro antioxidant activity, it was basically shown that the chloroform extract it will show the maximum activity when it was compared to the other two extracts. And in the in vivo activity, it was shown that when the disease control group, the level of the neutrophils and the lymphocytes, they were increasing. But when the treatment was given to these rats, the level they decreased when it was compared with the disease group. And for the oxidative stress testing, the levels of the malonyl aldehyde, GSH, catalase, and SOD were uh, evaluated. And depending on these, as the disease group, it shows increased malonyl aldehyde level. So the treatment group, it showed a comparative decrease in the level. And for the other three, that is the GSS, catalase and the SOD level, a decrease was exhibited in the disease control group and a similar increase was shown when it was given the treatment group. 
So to conclude the present study, the, the chloroform fraction of the flowering tops of the trifolium platinis, which consists of formalentin and biotinin A, which are the respective isoflavones which exhibit the antioxidant and the anti-inflammatory activity, it can be a promising approach in treating asthma and also provides insight in the development of new anti-herbal anti-asthmatic drugs. Thank you. Thank you, PO22. The session is now open for Q&A. Uh, you have made a chloroform extract. Have you analyzed the content of chloroform in your extract before no, giving it to the, animals? Uh, yeah, it was less when it was given to animals. A safer amount. Uh, what is that safer amount? Uh, the IC50 value when it was taken, so it was 3, which was potent. You're not getting my point. Chloroform is toxic, right? It is a solvent which cannot be given to humans, right? So if you are having a chloroform extract, you need to check for the content of chloroform in your extract, right? Hmm? Have you analyzed that? Yes, ma'am, it was analyzed and it was lower. Is this the first time that uh, uh, this activity was proven for this particular medicinal plant? Yes, ma'am. For this plant and asthmatics, it was the first time it was done. Okay, because you have said that it is reported to be an expectorant uh, used for sore throat and anti-inflammatory antioxidant property. So, uh, not just the flowering, the flower, the flowers, but other parts of the plant have they been reported for uh, any uh, lung diseases? When the flowering plants have not been reported yet, so the study was done. Okay. Yeah, uh, I could see more pigs than that of two actives in the HPTLC. HPLC, sorry, not TLC. So, what is the prominent peak is meant for? Ma'am, it was basically of the uh, majorly of the metabolite of this hormone antinone, which is again an isoflavonoid. So, is that part is playing the role in its activity? No, ma'am. The activity was because of hormone antinone. Because that is more significant than the fraction of your activity. Yes. Okay. I think we can move on. Thanks, you. Thank you, PO22. Now I would like to call PO23 for the presentation. PO23. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. yes, you're audible. Okay. Your poster has been shared. You can start. Uh, okay. Thank you. So, uh, topic of my presentation is synthesis of uh, pegylated chlorotoxin functionalized hollowable nanoparticles loaded with temozolamide pyrilolcol conjugate for the treatment of glioblastoma. So basically glioblastoma is a tumor arising from star-shaped glial cells. It is very aggressive type of cancer. So current therapy is with is showing that it should be done with temozolamide alone, but uh, the reoccurrence rate is very high. So uh, various papers have been reported that timozolamide should be used in combination with other drugs. So we have taken paril alcohol along with timozolamide. We have conjugated it for the treatment of glioblastoma. Uh, so for the synthesis, uh, sacrificial galvanic replacement method was used and uh, 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 Timozolamide and paralolcol was conjugated chemically in house. So first step was synthesis of hollowable nanoparticles, then uh, pegylation after the drug loading, uh, then it was conjugated with chlorotoxin and then it was uh, tested in vitro and in vivo. 
so the characterization parameters were uh, ultraviolet spectroscopy since it is photothermal ablation therapy uh, 808 nanometer in uv indicates that uh, the it is laser trigger drug release and zeta potential value of minus 15.5 mv indicates uh, that the uh, nanoparticle was stable so uh, looking at the dls dynamic light scattering graph uh, 20 nanometer particle size were obtained and it were more in count uh, then uh, this these are the 10 images in which uh, you can see the inner core diameter of 20 mm whereas the outer shell was 3 mm then uh, further we did the characterization of synthesized tp complex Uh, uh, FPI study indicate that uh, the functional group present at 1744 uh, indicates that the uh, new complex was formed which had amide bond in it then a single peak at single peak in TLC indicates uh, the purity of the compound it was done it was checked for HPLC also a sharp peak at 5 a uh, minute retention time indicate that a complex form was very pure it was also checked for c13 nmr and 1h nmr uh, which indicates its purity further it was checked for hr lcms uh, in that 373 mbyz value uh, matched with the calculated mbyz value of a synthesized compound it was checked for yes i am coming to the conclusion yes uh, then uh, checking for the stability was found to be stable also then uh, the nanoparticles were tested for mttsa uh, cca uh, and uh, cc analysis apoptosis also so on the conclusion we can say that this complex a uh, loaded fluorotoxin functionalized uh, hologol nanoparticles can be used to treat uh, glioblastoma thank you thank you pure bani three the session yes. is now open for q and First of all, I would say too much congested poster. Oh uh, yes, actually the data was more. Uh, yeah, the data was more. So I thought to uh, reduce few figures, but then uh, I did all the studies, so I kept all. You could have just keep uh, more uh, one, one or two. Uh, You could have keep one or two images of them, and uh, you can remove okay. others. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. It's not really required. And in the presentation, mm-hmm. also you explain initial part and the main rest of your study was not explained. Yeah. So okay, that's not a problem. What is the dose of parallel alcohol you are taking? uh parallel alcohol uh, i did not take uh, the dose of parallel it was conjugated with timozolamide and its complex was loaded in hologol nanoparticles no but so during the ratio of uh, uh, both uh, during synthesis i had taken 1 is to 1 concentration so if i take more so that more uh, unconjugated parallel alcohol will be removed by some by centrifugation and uh, by centrifugation yes which is free drug so basically if i add more of tmg more of poh uh, how, uh, it the <coughs> reacting molecules will be if if i take one is to one one is to one only will react and rest of the free drug will be there in the solution that is removed by centrifugation uh, that's a uh, uh, excess amount addition is okay but is there any safety proven of this uh, no no uh, safety as in uh, you can add uh any amount of tmg and poh the thing is you just have to conjugate it with paryl alcohol and excess can be removed so as such a toxicity is not uh, a major uh, concern uh, if synthesis is uh, seen synthesis part is seen. okay and uh, what was the rationale of taking this paryl sorry paryl alcohol Uh, so timozolamide alone cannot reach uh, the uh, brain tumor and it does not show activity like it cannot re- uh, uh, penetrate the uh, blood brain barrier and cannot uh, uh, treat the brain cancer that's why paryl alcohol was taken so it uh, is said that timozolamide when conjugated with paryl alcohol it shows better activity as compared to when it is used uh, individually So this is reported. Uh, Factory mozolamide can be used with other drugs in conjugation or individually, but uh, the complex was uh, only reported that this can be used, uh, like the mozolamide and paralgol can be conjugated. So if you are claiming it is helping in the permeability, uh, have you done any study regarding this? 
permeability studies are uh, yet pending we have only checked for uh, tumor growth inhibition and uh, in, in uh, cell line studies we have done mtt cc and apoptosis for permeation but in vivo so the result seems appropriate that uh, the cell that was uh, for cca it was found that the cell 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 that was observed in the s phase whereas uh, the cells did not undergo much of necrosis it was a proper apoptotic, apoptotic phase uh, cell death so is it uh, uh, telling you about permeability uh, that is not telling much about permeability uh, i mean like uh, it is uh, not telling about permeability it is just telling about cell permeability uh, in vitro on in vitro cell lines on cell line permeability it is just a cell line permeability and are not at the uh, site so for uh, in vivo study we have done only tumor growth inhibition pipeline studies are still remain so okay i think we can move on thank you yes welcome thank you so much thank you pio 23 yeah welcome thank you pio 24 for the presentation pio 24 pio 24 are you ready yes yes okay ma'am are you able to see the screen Uh, yes. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going. To... Can I start? Yes. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going for to... two minutes. Yes. Today I'm going to present a poster entitled "Formulation and Evaluation of Data Set Topical Gel Solution Garlic Extract for Male Part and Baldness." Gels are semi-solid systems in which the liquid passes constituent within a three-dimensional polymeric matrix of natural and synthetic gums. So here, the main uh, main aim of the present work is to formulate the eudacetylite herbal gel containing garlic extract for the treatment of androgenic alopecia. This androgenic alopecia is also known as male pattern baldness. In this is a type of progressive hair loss in which, which is because of the increased levels of DHT that comes from testosterone. Uh, this basically acts on the hair follicles, resulting in hair loss, as it can be seen in the mechanism. Uh, Dutasterol is an off-label drug so which acts on both the isomers of DHT. by dhd and it prevents the hair loss by preventing uh, by inhibiting the enzyme action so this the herbal gels were formulated containing the garlic extract coming to the experimental methodology gels were prepared using uh, first initially carbapol was mixed with water and then it was stirred then in another beaker water and isopropyl alcohol was added and then uh, to the initial preparation aloe vera gel and garlic mixed extracted garlic was added then uh, the present mixture to this dutasterol along with the isopropyl alcohol solution was added and which clear solution that That was obtained through this rhizomal amine was added to get the gel-like consistency. Moving on to the results and discussions. Uh, first preliminary trial results uh, from that initial carbapol gel was prepared in 0.5 to 2.5 concentration range, and from that 2% carbapol was selected as it showed good gelling properties with all the ingredients being used. Then further drug screening compatibility studies were carried out, uh, and from as the drug treatment was in the final formulation, it can be said that the drug and the ingredients are compatible with each other. Moving on to the formulations. by formulation of the gel using different concentrations of the garlic extract that is 1% 3% 5% 10% and uh, then this all the gels which were apart from that uh, plain natural uh, right gels and uh, placebos were prepared uh, this gels were uh, evaluated for various parameters which included the clarity of the gel homogeneity and the ph of the preparation then spreadability the extrudibility from the container that is the tubes and then drug content was as well as drug release studies using the dialysis membrane like keeping on the open end cylinders and then checking it 
from the thesis it can be seen that the pilatus which contains 10% of the garlic extract was uh, like it showed a compatible results uh, uh, for all the physiochemical parameters as well as the drug release uh, which is like drug release at the end of third hour we had uh, about 97.82% so this particular formulation uh, was selected for hazard studies using the albino rats for the albino rats the dorsal part that is 4 cm square uh, region of the time is up yes ma'am so as it can be seen for for 30 days uh, the garlic 10% garlic solution uh, it should good head 26 so this can be concluded that Uh, androgenic alopecia is basically related to hair loss in the inability to grow hair which causes barnes so deuterosteroid which is an off label drug for androgenic alopecia it is formulated as a herbal gel containing garlic extract this particular garlic extract has various sulfur ingredients uh, and other nutrients which boost the hair along with the drug so when alone drug is being used and compared to the garlic extract it is simply more time has been up yeah Thank you. Yeah, your time is over. The session is now open for Q and A. So even in your control group, the hair eventually grows back, right? Yes, ma'am. I compared to uh, ma'am. Like actually, we have six centimeter hair growth centimeter in centimeters, ma'am. So if we can see generally uh, with the garlic, the hair, the length is much more compared to the control group. And, and how did you induce the alopecia? Ma'am, um, we have not uh, induced alopecia as such. We just naturally we are checking. We shave the entire like four centimeter region of the hair, and then to that particular area for a period of one month we have applied the gel. Like we did not induce as such alopecia, ma'am. Just to check natural hair growth, how it is occurring, we have done. So, can you claim that this could be used in androgenic alopecia? It could be a simple hair tonic. Ma'am, actually, uh, when we are che- checking this particular thing, we are comparing the effect of the like the drug that is dutasteroid, which is actually used for androgenic alopecia. So, we are comparing that effect as such alone, and then in comparison with garlic extract. So, for that purpose. I have stated that particular point as it can be used for male pattern barn. As how many you see here, there are there in each group? Like how many animals are there in each group? Ma'am, in each group we had six animals. Have you checked the individual activity of garlic extract? Yes, ma'am. We have checked. Actually, I did not keep in this, but yeah, even in the plain garlic extract had been prepared. Gels were prepared. Ma'am. No, and then we have studies. Checked. Yes, ma'am. We have checked, yeah, but it is not as much as it can be seen in case of this uh, along with neutrosteroid, ma'am. It's comparatively less with the hair growth. Ma'am. Okay. Okay. चलो थैंक यू वेरी मच आई थिंक वी कैन मूव ऑन थैंक यू थैंक यू पीओ 24 थैंक यू जजेस नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल पीओ 26 फॉर द प्रेजेंटेशन पीओ 26 पीओ 26 आर यू रेडी Okay, PO twenty six. You can start. We cannot hear you. Six, we are not able to hear you. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so good morning, all judges and participants. I am Pure Twenty Six, presenting in your fascinating study of in silico expression of 
cytochemical base has written on caffeic acid in the ENC for management of diabetes and hypertension. As you see in our day to day life, out of, two, out of 10 two people are having either diabetes or hypertension or both the two disorders. Even WG statistics reported more than 70% coexistence of diabetes and hypertension, causing neuropathy, nephropathy, and even in some case of COVID related infection. But till this day, there is no such a single drug available in market showing dual activity in this case of coexistence. This motivated us to develop a novel moiety having dual activity using in silico techniques. On the basis of extensive star, star studies, uh, we have developed 56 new MCs based on hybrid approach considering these uh, PPR targeting anti-diabetic hydrogen pharmacophore, uh, ACE targeting anti-hypertensive indole pharmacophore and both ACE and PPA are targeting cathic acid pharmacophore. These all, these all design MCs were screened, screened out on the basis of their drug likelihood parameter using Swiss ADME online software and among which 19 compounds were selected using Lipinski's parameter and further submitted for docking study using Autodoc Mina software on three predictive structures that is anti-diabetic PPR targeting 5 by 2 p ACE targeting 4 BVA and dual activity showing 108 protein molecule. Among which 50% compound, these 50% highlighted compound have shown interaction with all the three PDBs, which signifies its activity as dual activity. Okay, among these Highlighted compounds, compound number 13, 42, and 15 have shown interaction with all the three PDBs and binding activity even more greater than standard drug that is low beglitazone, pindolol, and cathic acid. In addition to this, compound number 42 have shown uh, uh, inter, uh, in this 2 and 3 interaction of compound number 42, 42 it has shown interaction with key amino acid that is glutamine 281 and vitamin K23. As similar to the PDB from interaction that I said, your time is up, you can yes. continue. Uh, okay, so future potential of my work are synthesis, biological activity, and drug development of uh, this novel mo molecule. So these are my key references. Uh, thank you. Thank you, PO26. The session is now open for QA. Okay, so just one question. Uh, you have taken the indoor multi from Pindolol. But if you know the structure of Pindolol, uh, the indoor multi doesn't play, play a bigger role in its binding, it's the rest of the molecule. So, have you tried to match your design with uh, the structurally with uh, the anti hypertensive, with uh, beta blockers? Yes ma'am, uh, we have done a SAR study, uh, uh, on the basis of SAR studies, we have selected this pharmacophores, where uh, my SAR studies uh, describe the pindolol as a uh, active or uh, important uh, pharmacophore for uh, AC inhibitor and uh, uh, giving anti hypertensive activity. So, we took it in our model. Thank you ma'am. Okay. Also, I see that in your cathic acid, so although cathic acid is, uh, has shown a lot of activity, don't you think it, is show, it, is, it has the flag of being a mitral acceptor? It will give, it, give you a lot of toxicity. So, since you are designing a molecule, should you not take care of the toxicity also at this stage? Ma'am, uh, I have not done toxicity yet, but I am uh, planning to do it. Okay. Okay, and no more questions from my side. Okay, so I think we can move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to PO26. I will now like to call PO28 for the presentation. PO28. Uh, hello. Once. Yes, you are audible. You are sharing your presentation. Huh. Can you see my presentation? Yes, yes, yes. we can. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes you are audible. Okay. okay, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have done my 
research work on in cyclical screening and in vitro evaluation of 134 oxidizer analogs for the anti tubercular activity so according to the uh, recent reviews and all there is a uh, the chance that tuberculosis is increasing worldwide so i have taken this as a challenge of designing your anti tubercular drugs so we have performed um, in silico screening that is a docking against uh, so many 134 oxidazole derivatives almost with 30 compounds against inactive reductase enzyme which primarily acts on fatty acid biosynthesis so the, uh, here we have done for 30 amounts like we got a docking score of minus 8.22 minus 10 uh, kilo calorie per mole and top 3 uh, least dock score is been mentioned over here so i have got a uh, docking score of minus 9.6 minus 9.7 and minus 10.0 where minus 10.0 is an phenyl derivative and coming to the discussion part there was an attachment of uh, tyrosine 158 to my actual group of uh, nitrophenyl nitrophenyl group where tyrosine 158 attachment to the nitro uh, groups with hydrogen bond shows the better and best activity and coming to the discussion part with my scheme it was shown that electron withdrawing electron donating groups also affected their docking score with that it even affected the tubercular activity too uh, so the docking score when it got affected it was shown that electron withdrawing group showed the best activity and electron donating little lesser than the electron withdrawing group and coming to the activity activity was done using maba micropellate elmer blue assay where the standards such as isoniazid rifampicin and streptomycin was used and mic was um, determined using this maba test and from this it was found that rs01 and rs02 one is methoxyphenyl as chloroquine that the process and for it and hello your time is up you can pass hum R03 with the best uh, MIC that is 0.8. So I conclude that the nitro derivative that was prepared had the best MIC value of 0.8, best dog score of minus 10, and coming to the AMT, there was zero violation against Lipinski Weber's rule. And um, with um, as I have not mentioned the nitro dog test for which both the uh, the highest effect index was seen in nitro derivative only thank you thank you for coming okay. the session the yeah. session is now open yes so can you explain this maba table what is this r and s mean r is um, resistant and s is sensitive it represents that this bacterial group actually according to maba test as i had last time i couldn't explain maba test is something where we use a reagent elmer blue uh, elmer blue where uh, if while um, taking different concentration of the putting the reagent there is a change in color from uh, blue to pink it shows that it resists the bacterial growth when there is no color change that is the blue color then it is said to be sensitive and there is no bacterial growth so there was no bacterial growth for compound rs01 rs02 at 1.6 microgram per ml after which it showed the bacterial growth that represents snr thank you so my uh, just one question uh, you have used the isomer of rifampicin streptomycin standard for maba assay uh, yes. What is the uh, the known drug with, with activity against the phenyl coenzyme reductase? Since you are trying to design a drug, a compound for phenyl uh, coenzyme reductase uh, inhibition, you should have uh, the uh, the standards should also have included uh, a compound which is known to inhibit. So, which is which among these three is known to inhibit your phenyl coenzyme reductase? 
for 24 hours it will stay man as per the study i have conducted mucor addition time it will stay for 24 hours man. considering the activity of oral cavity and use will it be possible sorry ma'am considering the uh, function of oral cavity or as for use of it will it be possible to be there for 24 hours Ma'am, it's not like uh, 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 keeping it for 24 hours, ma'am. It is just to uh, see that whether it will hold the addition time or it will stay for a long time or not to uh, for the release of drug. That's why we have decided, uh, we are preferring to give the uh, uh, film uh, after the food is preferred, especially after the dinner in a gum region so that no disturbance during and after the administration. Okay, no more questions from my side. One question, as you say 24 hours, will it not cause toxicity on the oral cavity? No ma'am, so dosage, dosage is not that much ma'am. It is like ATMG ma'am. It will not cause uh, toxicity ma'am. Have you checked that by any histopathological no, studies in the manner? Not conducted ma'am. I think so you are planning to do that? Uh, no ma'am. No. no. Okay. We'll look into that now. Okay, thank you. I think we can move on. Thank you. Now I would like to call PO31 for the presentation. PO31. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. PO29, shall I stop sharing your screen? Yes, you can share. Is it visible now? Hello, ma'am. Have you shared your screen or should we share? Yes, I have shared this screen, ma'am. Screen is not visible yet. Okay. Okay, you share the screen, ma'am. Okay. We are sharing. Hmm. It's not. But maybe we can see the previous one only. Sorry, ma'am. Ani, now I think we see it now. Ah, yes, ma'am. Ah, okay, we can see. Okay. You can start. Okay, ma'am. Good afternoon to all. My topic is about formulation of natural laboratory disinfectant, that is, current laboratory disinfectant using orange peel base. Then we have to uh, start with the preparation of RN laboratory disinfectant. The present project focused on the formulation of natural laboratory disinfectant by using orange peel. Orange peel which was thrown as waste was collected from the juice shops. Then the collected orange peel waste was soaked in water along with a little amount of jaggery for supporting the fermentation process for 90 days. And after the 90 days duration, the product was filtered using cotton clothes and evaluated for its beneficial activity. Then we have determined the antimicrobial activity of laboratory disinfectant and that is minimum liquidity concentration brought dilution method. Then we have tested for about 10 pathogenic bacterial species and for uh, fungal species. Then now finding us, it was observed that the RN laboratory disinfectant have an ability to inhibit the growth of above mentioned bacteria and fungal pathogens completely at 20% concentration. Then we have evaluated the sensory evaluation. The color is golden in blue and the pH is 4.2. The order, order is moderate orange order. The taste is sour. There is no skin and eye irritation. And my conclusion and recommendation is I have recommended this laboratory disinfectant for disinfecting the closed ceramic tiles, glass waste, surface of equipment, water sinks, and microbiology laboratories. And also recommend to use for cleaning of toilets, stainless steel vessels, window glasses. Then, improper disposable of microbial wastes is a major problem in the universe. And the incident of Wuhan, that is in China, was very well known example for that. The use of our disinfectant in laboratories will prevent the spreading of pathogenic microorganisms from laboratory to our society and reduce the dumping of waste occurred by orange peel waste. 
and my future plan is to prepare laboratory disinfectant by using citric acid based foods like sweet lime and lemon and i also applied for australian patent and it also been granted the patent the, for the research on method for formulation of natural laboratory disinfectant using orange peel based the patent number is 2021 07045 and thank you ma'am thank you thank you pure 31 you have also had a jaggery in this ha sorry ma'am formulation also has i mean you also have used jaggery orange peel uh, base along with jaggery it is that part of your jaggery okay it is for fermentation process ma'am okay uh so you do so don't you think that this itself will uh, is susceptible to microbial growth Yes, at about twenty percent concentration, it will. Yes, ma'am. It will be right. Since you are taking uh, uh, something like jaggery in your preparation, so even if it gets fermented, and that's probably what your disinfectant action relies on, that the alcohol will be produced. But the very fact that you have included jaggery in your uh, as a raw material will make it susceptible to uh, microbial growth. Uh, have you found? No, ma'am. Uh, as I have mentioned, no, ma'am. As I have mentioned, very little amount of jaggery is added. But uh, orange peel has uh, citric acid, so citric acid will prevent the growth of other microorganisms, ma'am. Not only microbes. What is the shelf life of your uh, uh, disinfectant? Actually, uh, orange peel has citric acid. Citric acid will uh, uh, act as a preservative for about uh, one to three years, ma'am. When it is not opened, if it is usable, it is up to one year. Important. Okay, what is uh, formulation? Why have you mentioned taste? Can't understand, ma'am. Taste is one of the organoleptic properties that you have mentioned, na. Taste, char. So is that like a significant attribute for a disinfectant? Sensory is that like a taste? Ah, you have tested. Ah, but do you need to test that for a disinfectant? You are going to apply it on surface. You are not going to. Taste it, right? So, do you need to really do that test? No, it's not need, ma'am. Just we have mentioned. Okay. So, what kind of change is happening after fermentation? What exactly are you trying to achieve by fermenting your orange peels? Uh, after fermentation, the in the orange peel, the citric acid will uh, will ferment, ma'am. Mm hmm. And form? We can. Eat. In acid form, ma'am. Okay. 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 Thank you, Pio Thirty One. Now I would like to call Pio Thirty Two for the presentation. Pio Thirty Two. Yes. Visible? Yes, sir. Visible. I'm on the call. Thirty. Thank you. 
Okay, PO thirty six. Are you ready? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, we are sharing your poster. PO thirty five. We'll call you later. Hello, Emma. PO thirty six. PO thirty six. Yes. The poster has been shared. You can start. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. So my topic for discussion is standardization of an Ayurvedic formulation. In recent studies, Ayurveda has achieved widespread acceptance among the general public since many chronic diseases respond effectively to the treatment of Ayurvedic medication. But the standardization of Ayurvedic formulation is not stringent. Standardization of Ayurvedic preparation is an important factor for the assessment of its safety and efficacy. There are different methods for evaluating the effectiveness of Ayurvedic formulation. Among them, there are the Ayurvedic formulation method, 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 Ayurvedic formulation method
was found to be uh, eight, eight and for sodium acid it was found to be uh, nine. You have like a clear uh, background. As uh, and no, uh, for standard, uh, for the standard no, for the use, the, uh, chromatogram. No, the uh, the second pick is of the formulation. In formulation, there were other constituents present uh, along with berylin and ursolic acid. Okay, those are the questions from me. Fatima? Yeah, we can move ahead. I don't think there is anything more to yes, ask. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, PO36. Uh, PO35, are you ready now? Yes, yes. Uh, PO35, are you ready? Yes, yes. Uh, PO36, are you ready? Yes, yes. Uh, you are audible. We are sharing, we are sharing your, your presentation. Your poster, your poster has been shared. You can start. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, all. Uh, the topic of my po uh, poster presentation is evaluation of in vitro anti-eczema activity of whipped cream soap containing butia monosperma flower extract. Eczema is a group of skin disease which presenting with the uh, itchiness, redness, blister, and skin thickening. And the currently used synthetic uh, 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 drugs have been associated with the various side effects such as the rashes, dryness, uh, redness and also itching. And the medicinal plant have the long history of use and have been shown to possess the low side effects. Hence the herbal anti-eczematic medicine with the low side effects can be good alternative in the treatment of eczema. Traditionally the flower of butea monosperma are used for the various skin disease. And however, the plant uh, has not been explored scientifically for the uh, anti-eczema activity. The novelty of the research is that we uh, developed the uh, novel herbal uh, whipped cream soap with the multimodal activity. And in eczema, doctor prescribes the moisturizing cream uh, along with the antibacterial and antioxidant treatment. And the whipped cream soap has the uh, and also whipped cream uh, soap has the very good moisturizing effect than the ordinary bar and as well as the uh, uh, excellent antioxidant activity by the scavenging activity as compared to standard ascorbic acid and uh, uh, and also excellent uh, in vitro anti-inflammatory activity by albumin denaturation ignition method as compared to standard aspirin and the and, and also antibacterial activity by agar well diffusion method. And hence, it can be concluded that the herbal whipped uh, cream soap of the butea monosperma flower extract may be used as a potential anti-eczema agent by acting as a various uh, components of eczema. Thank you. Thank you, Priyo35. The session is now open for Q&A. Uh, I wanted to know, my dear, that uh, you, as you have said, that the doctors prescribe moisturizing cream for the treatment of eczema. <laughs> So with what logic have you used a soap? Because soap will get washed away. Moisturizing moisturizing cream will have a longer contact time with the eczematic lesion. Whereas the soap is temporary. So how effective will the soap be in comparison to your cream? Uh, 
मैम द मॉइस्चराइजिंग द सोप सॉरी द विप क्रीम सोप कैन बी यूज एज अ बॉडी सोप फेस वॉश फॉर अप्लाइंग फॉर अप्लाइंग द रिपीट टू थ्री टाइम्स इन अ डे एंड देन वॉश इट कैन बी मॉइस्चराइज द स्किन एंड प्रिवेंट द इरीटेशन ऑफ द स्किन yeah precisely but if i apply a moisturizing cream that has a longer duration of action right it is in contact with my skin for a longer time no yes sir hmm? and also what uh, what are these petri dishes that you have shown with butia monosperma standard and sample zones of inhibitions that you are showing yes so as far as i know eczema does not have any skin infection so do we require this activity for eczema as cream can you please repeat you have shown the i use the florent pitfall as a standard so uh, they inhibit the bacterial protein uh no and okay all right Fine. We can move ahead. Or sorry, come on, if you. Are. No, no, no. Uh, we can move ahead. Thank you. You are there. she is Sir, frozen papa, yeah yeah she is lost connectivity yeah so aarti jara aap dusre student se connect karke follow kara lo na nahi is सारिका मैडम या या दैट वे वी कैन सॉर्ट आउट ओके मैम आई ट्राई कॉलिंग द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स यू आर 37 यू कैन शेयर द पीपीटी एंड यू कैन स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन ओके मैम can be combined so here i'm using herbal uh, is fennel oil so i choose this combination based on mtt assay so in which i have found that uh, iso50 value of scavenger citrate is 45.81 mg per ml uh, and for fennel oil it is 78.24 mg per ml but using combination it dropped down to 19.64 mg per ml so it show it proves the synergistic effect of the combinations so here i'm formulating the topical gel containing phg and nano particles loaded with both the drugs so topical gel will uh, localize the drug into the breast tissue and retain there for longer time increasing the drug concentration in breast tissue and reducing the systemic uh, drug exposure so i have prepared the phg and nano particles using nano precipitation method and then 
optimized it using previous to factorial design and evaluated for particle size, zeta potential, and HRT microscopy. Then I loaded them into the 1% of carbophol gel and uh, evaluated for its appearance, pH, viscosity, drug content, and spreadability. Then the in vitro uh, and ex vivo release were done for the gel, uh, which gave the drug release of 91% and 89% of drug release for tamoxifen citrate and phenyl oil, uh, respectively. Then cell cytotoxic studies were done uh, with the use of MTT assay on MCF7 cell line, uh, from which it was found out that the formulation, uh, IC50 value for formulation, was further dropped down to 10.92 mg per ml, which shows the eff efficacy of the formulation against the breast cancer. So to conclude, I would like to say that the combined therapy of tamoxifen citrate and phenyl oil in topical gel might be a promising approach for treatment of breast cancer. Thank you. Thank you, Pure 37. This session is now open for QA. So uh, oh. this is a topical delivery. Am I right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, and again, you have done your. Uh, permeation studies or the diffusion, I think it is still 96 hours. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so gel and uh, your nanoparticles you have compared over there, right? Nanoparticles. So, so it is supposed yes, to stay there for 96 hours to release the drug till 100%. Yes, ma'am. Losing the connection, I'm not able to hear. Correct. I could not hear anything, my dear. Even not me. Can you answer it again? Sure. Uh, yes, ma'am. So I was saying ki, uh, uh, as a drug releases, the PLJ is a biocompatible or biodegradable polymer. So as drug releases, it will degrade it, uh, itself uh, in the region. So it convert to carbon dioxide. But it is a systemically acting drug, no? Tamoxifen? Yes. What is the mechanism of action of tamoxifen? Uh, so when tamoxifen is uh, used for uh, estrogen receptor bind, it is it acts as an estrogen receptor binder. So breast mm -hmm. cancer cells have uh, estrogen receptor. It will uh, bind there and uh, prevent the estrogen receptors. Okay, and it how do you end? It has to permeate through the yeah. It has to permeate through the skin. So do you ensure that how do you ensure yes. that uh, it reaches the receptors, the muscle and the uh, receptors? Uh, so ma'am, actually, it's based on a theory which I found that uh, due to Brett's embryological uh, structure. It's it's it. Uh, there is a leaky structure, so it nanoparticles can uh, enter through them. Uh, so PLGA is a lipophilic polymer. So due to its uh, breast cancer, it can enter in them. And how do you ensure the, the yeah? And how do you ensure that the gel remains in contact for such a long time? So ma'am, I'm not mentioning here, but I've done this studies uh, for gel. Uh, where I have before it, uh, where I have before it, I have 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 Yeah. 
It was found that uh, the uh, chloroform is uh, more active than uh, uh, hexane by evaluation of bacterial uh, behavior. Uh, so we had work on chloroform uh, chloroform for fractionation. Two fractions are uh, fractions uh, of the fractionating column. Uh, uh, it was exposed to the zebra fish uh, for further study. And it was found that fraction two is more active uh, than fraction one. Uh, according to the graph, the, uh, the latency from the, uh, the average latency, uh, the in this is in this is group as compared to the uh, vehicle group, the latency is low. And in a uh, uh, and uh, second uh, second one is time spent uh, in this is group, it is high as compared to the vehicle group. Then uh, then we have done standard. Standardization of fraction two by using uh, using and different analytical analytical techniques. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Forty Nine. The session is now open for Q and A. Yes. So you have performed the studies in zebra fish. So what yes. kind of ethical approvals did you require for it? So I am CPCA protocol meeting. CPCA, CPCA, okay. And how did you study the neuroprotective activity? What was the test that you have done? How did you evaluate?
Sometimes I need someone with the time. So what have you studied in that? How have you noted down this study? It is new to me, so I'm just kind of inquiring. Ma'am, should we zoom in? Fish tank. Oh, okay. In fish tank, ma'am. OK, all right. So what have you measured? You have given some challenge. What challenge? By, uh, by using greed. By using greed. All right. All right. OK, all right. Fine. We so can go ahead. Have you done any biochemical parameters? Sorry, ma'am, can you please repeat? Have you done any biochemical parameters? Because you have written it in the protocol. Yes, ma'am. Uh, GS, GSS. The GSH, SOD, and NDA. So where are the results? Results are there? No, ma'am. I have. Yes. Okay. We're sharing your presentation. Should I start? Hello. Yes, you can start. Your pre uh, poster has been shared. A very good afternoon to one and all. So today my topic for poster presentation is effect of Parthenium hysteropyris as neuroprotective using fruit fly as a model. As we know, Parkinson's disease is the second most common disorder, neurodegenerative disorder. So I've taken this disease and Parthenium hysteropyris, it is it is commonly known as Gajar Gawat and it has some constituents which have have such activities such as uh, antioxidant activity and other activities and some in-house activity has also neuroprotective activity has has been done in my college so i've chosen this plant to see the neuroprotective activity so first in the plan of work it includes collection and authentication of plant material then it's preparation of plant extract phytochemical screening then acutoxicity study that was done then induction of disease and then checking of behavioral parameters of drosophila that is fruit fly model and result in conclusion. So collection and authentication of plant materials was done Then preparation of extract. So successive extraction was done using three solvents, which was hexane, ethyl acetate, and ethanol. Success, it was from less polar to more polar solvents were used. And then for each extract, so phytochemical screening was done for each of the chemicals, that hexane extract of parthenium hysteropheris, then ethyl acetate extract of parthenium hysteropheris, and ethanolic extract of parthenium hysteropheris. And it shows presence of alkaloids, flavonoids, and etc. that are shown on, on the poster, except HEP showed, except all, it showed all except the glycosides and other. And then after that, as we didn't know the dose, what dose should be given to the drosophila, so acute toxicity study was done. And according to that, we have found that for HEP, it was 40 mg, and for ethyl acetate, it was found to 30 mg, 30 microgram per liter. And per milliliter and for ethanolic extract it was found to for it was on 25 microgram per liter according to that that eight groups were made and doses were doses were made it, the groups included vehicle control disease control high dose of HEP low dose of HEPH high doses of EAPPH low dose of it and high doses of ethanol extract of parthenium hysteropheris and for and for checking the behavior parameter we have checked the in the we have checked and your time is up you can proceed with conclusion 
ओके सो माय बेसिकली माय कंक्लूजन वाज आई हैव टू बेसिकली कंपेयर द थ्री मेन थ्री एक्सट्रैक्ट्स ऑफ पैथिनेम हिस्टेरोफिलस इन दैट वी हैव फाउंड दैट ऑल हैव शोन proper neuro activity neuro protective activity in drosophila melanogaster and the the ethanolic extract was found to be have good efficacy than other extracts such as hexane and ethyl acetate extract of parthenium hysterophilus hello yes So uh, you have mentioned about the locomotor activity, but what about other uh, behavioral parameters? Have you done those? Like for Drosophila, there is only one locom behavioral parameter that is negative geotoxic acid. That is And mentioned. Any other parameter for evaluation? No, ma'am. Actually, there is a biochemical parameter, but it is very hard to means extract the brain of Drosophila as they are very small. So I have considered. and for my course i have only included drosophila as a model and i have done many like i have done it on zebra fish also so is there any difference in the activity for zebra fish and flies ma'am it showed the same activity like ethanolic extract was has has shown greater activity than other two extracts like hexane and ethyl acetate okay Um, what do you mean your yeah, these disease control she mentions what is that disease control do you and disease control in we have just induced the retinon to, to to see the behavioral parameter of these flies like uh, and for seeing that we have taken the tube graduate tube cap the flies in that and how 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 they can travel like up to which point they can fly we have marked the certain distance on that tube so like in the, in parkinson there is a this is a symptom known as predikinesis it is slowness of movement so this disease control group showed slowness of movements they were not able to fly at a certain height all right fine are these models proven reported somewhere um this is not exactly included in cpcsa guidelines so i didn't require a proper protocol for no, it no 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 i'm i'm asking i'm asking is drosophila model reported somewhere yes. for the study or evaluation yes, of neuro uh, like, parkinson yes ma'am like 70% of the genetic genetic material is same as that of humans so it is most it is reported as a model which can be used neuro protective or parkinson ma'am as in neurodegenerative and mostly for genetic disorders okay all right thank you thank you ma'am thank you po 52 thank you judges now i would like to call po 41 po 41 hello am i audible yes you are audible you are sharing your presentation the pres your poster has been shared you can start mm -hmm. uh, uh, my poster topic is about evaluation of anti inflammatory potential of timolol um to achieve a therapeutic anti inflammatory response drug should be able to have inhibition effect against inflammatory and pro inflammatory mediator study suggests that both sympathetic agonist and antagonist uh, have some potency or uh, show some potency of anti inflammatory activity which further leads to the conclusion that adrenal receptor play a significant role in the whole process of inflammatory cascade for this study therefore a non selective beta blocker was selected for further finding its anti inflammatory activity we perform four methods or uh, four studies a uh, two in vitro and two in vivo uh to in vitro include a protein denaturation assay and membrane lysis assay whereas in vivo models were carrageenan induced uh one was hinpo edema model and air forge model experimental design uh, all animals were divided into six groups uh, each containing six number of animals uh about the result now uh in case of in vitro protein denaturation assay a uh, protein denaturation is generally uh, associated with a uh, cause Since they are well known for cause of inflammation, 
so the person inhibition of protein denaturation was observed wearing the standard drug uh, show more uh, inhibition compared to the test drug uh, whereas in case of uh, the second in vitro study that is membrane lysis assay it was conducted as red uh, blood cell uh, resembles lysosomal membrane uh, and a study suggests that lysosomal membrane stabilization is uh, limits the active influence of inflammation so here the person inhibition of um, membrane lysis as assay was being seen where both the drug have seen a similar inhibition effect uh then further the levels of tnf alpha and il1 concentration in plasma level wherein uh, the standard drug has shown significant uh, decrease level of tnf alpha compared to the test drug uh, then similarly about uh, the uh, percent inhibition study uh, wherein the percent inhibition rate of pau edema at different time intervals was uh, seen uh where other uh, standard drug show PO those different... yeah your time is up you can proceed with conclusion and uh, sure um so uh, accordingly both acute and chronic inflammatory models were studied the data collected suggests that the test drug that possess not strong anti inflammatory but uh, some anti inflammatory activity uh, compared to the standard drug Uh, diclofenac. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, PO41. Uh, The session is now open for Q and A. Now you have what basis have you selected, Timolol? You just say both sympathetic agonist and antagonist have some anti-inflammatory yes. activity. Now use of these agents as anti-inflammatory activity will they be free of side effects? uh actually ma'am uh general i have i have used it to um see the effect of uh, that it show any anti inflammatory effect so the dose selected was less so there was no such adverse uh, side effects seen the dose used was very less so that dose has not even given you very good anti inflammatory yes potential uh, okay so you have only evaluated anti inflammatory you uh, have not uh, gone for hmm sorry but you are saying against inflammatory and pro pro inflammatory mediators so both have you evaluated any of these mediators as well actually uh, ma'am uh, timolol uh, which is marketed as an um, for anti glaucoma treat uh, for glaucoma treatment has shown yes. inhibition uh, means mm -hmm. has shown inhibition uh, oh. uh, it had inhibit level uh, means studies have shown uh, that timolol inhibits level of interleukin 6 1 beta mm -hmm. tnf alpha uh, in aqueous mm -hmm. human also it mm -hmm. has uh, act uh, activated carbonic anhydrase enzyme uh, which is in inverse relation with prostaglandin and cox enzyme so it was means it was uh, taken uh, to estimate that timolol might act as a suppressor of suppressor of cytokine signaling protein to inhibit specific okay. interleukins all right and so you have evaluated both interleukins and tnf alpha so yes. what was your sample in what sample have you evaluated this <clears throat> have you evaluated it in your Where you have induced inflammation from that site, you have withdrawn the sample. Ah, uh, from the inflammatory site only, I have taken the sample. From the inflammatory site itself. So where you have induced? Ah, uh, in so, so it was two models. So one was from the paw. Uh huh. And one was from the back portion, ear portion. Okay, but then you mention over here concentration in plasma level.
All right. So membrane lysis assay was performed by. What was the procedure for this in vitro membrane lysis assay? You have mentioned above your graphs methodology. Protein denaturation and membrane lysis assay. Uh, Ma'am, it was done in 0.05 ml of RBC suspension. Okay. All right. And you are also mentioning that the drug you have, what have you concluded finally? That it does have anti inflammatory potential uh, or it does not have anti inflammatory? It, compared to the standard, it does not show that strong anti inflammatory effect. It shows anti inflammatory effect, but not that strong compared to the standard drug. Your conclusion uh, says that the study suggests it has a strong, it does have a strong in anti inflammatory of activity. <laughs> All right. And overall, I want to mention that uh, that uh, Tmolol has shown uh, it was evaluated for its anti-inflammatory activity. Overall, it has shown anti-inflammatory activity, but compared to the standard drug, uh, it has not shown that strong anti-inflammatory. Okay. All right. Fine. We can have the next. Thank you, PU 5041. Uh, thank you, judges. Now, I would like to call PO 53. For the presentation, PO fifty three. PO fifty three. Yes, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. We're sharing your presentation. Okay. Should I start? Yes, you can start. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon to all. Uh, the, my, the topic of my presentation is a new perspective to develop nebidapine orally disintegrating tablets by the application of a novel sedum expert system. Sedum and sediment delivery model. It is an innovative tool to correlate the micromagnetic properties of the powders with the compressibility. So let's get started with the introduction. Oral dispersible tablets, that is the ODT, are among the new forms of a pediatric therapy, along with the suppositories, oral suspensions, or soft capsules. Direct compression is a popular method for producing ODT. It has a several advantages, like it has a increased the, uh, stability, accurate dosage regimen is there, easy manufacturing process, and etc. The reduced number of the processing steps compared to dry and wet granulation, the availability of a wide range of excipients, makes it an attractive approach. Other advantages include if the drug is water uh, sensitive, then we can use uh, this method. Uh, it also reduces the uh, lead time of the formulation study and uh, cost of the cost, etc. Excipient selection, especially of a super disinfluent, is a key part of a formulation for making the ODT tablet. Key other drug used is a nebirapine. Nebirapine is a BCS class second drug. It has a low solubility and high permeability. So first we prepare the solid dispersion of a nebirapine to increase its solubility. So here the solvent evaporation method is used. Now moving to, to the towards the sedum. So it is a technique that is developed by Sunya Nere, the name of the scientist. So actually it is uh, useful, useful to identify the directly compressible excipients. So uh, we are going to, uh, it is a, a pre-formulation tool that gives an idea about the API uh, and the excipients which are directly compressible or not. So here we studied the different uh, 15 parameters. So let's get started. The intrinsic properties of any powder are derived from solid basic indices. Uh, it consists of uh, dimension, compressibility, flowability, then its stability, lubricity, etc. So these are the five indices. Uh, so first one is the dimension. It consists of the bulk density and tap, tap density we have to calculate. The second one is the compressibility. It includes the interparticle porosity, cohesion index, and SARS index. Then the third one is the flowability. That is the angle of repose, phosphor ratio. All these are going to be calculated. After calculating, 
यू कैन सी द मटेरियल अच्छा मटेरियल यूज हियर वी आर नेग्रा पाइन क्रॉस कोविडन क्रॉस फॉर्मल सोडियम मैनिटॉल एंड सोडियम स्टार्च ग्लाइकोलेट सो दीज आर द सुपर डिसंटीर एंड मैनिटॉल इज अ डायग्रांड ऑफ फिलर द मेथड एज आई सेट इट वी प्रिपेयर द सॉलिड डिस्कशन ऑफ अ नेग्रा पाइन टू इंक्रीज द सोल्यूबिलिटी सो एज यू कैन सी इन द ग्राफ द हियर वी टेक द फाइव डिफरेंट मीडिया सो फर्स्ट वन इज नेग्रा पाइन दट इज अ प्लेन ड्रग देन वी प्रिपेयर द फिजिकल मिक्सर ऑफ अ ड्रग एंड फॉलोम इन डिफरेंट रेशियो In a one to one and one to ratio, one to two ratio, the solid dispersion of a nigra pine. So it is clearly in the. Uh, we see that uh, the. So you fifty three. Your time is up. You can proceed with the conclusion. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what we are going to uh, calculate those properties? We are converted into the R factors, and then we are draw this R factor into our sedent diagram. As you can see in the. So these are the sedent diagram. We have to. Uh, Put that R uh, R value into this diagram. Then we get the radar diagrams, and on the basis, you, as you know that these are the radar diagrams of a uh, sodium star glycolate. So first two and a microcrystalline cellular. The the area is just too small, so these are not uh, good for compression. And if you compare others, then they they are good because uh, the, uh, you can see that we are converted those factors into zero to ten level. If the uh, the value is greater than five, then it is good for a compression. If it is less, then it is not good for a compression. At the last. we can see the dissolution profile here the simulated salivary fluid the the uh, in vitro dissolution is a greater uh, of the oral dispersed by tablet in a confirm normal cell it is a slope thank you thank you pio 53 the session is now open for q and a Okay, so uh, what is the advantage of using sedum here? The sedum, yeah, uh, the uh, sedum here we use the sedum technique for only uh, the excipients or API which are directly compressible. So we reduce the uh, the reformulations uh, trials and then uh, excipient those excipients which are actually undergoing the direct compression. We are going to evaluate with the help of the sedum system. And what is the limitation it gives sometimes? What sorry? What is the limitation of this approach? So limitation of this approach, uh, sometimes uh, it is only applicable to ODT if you want to prepare ODT tablet, efflorescence and matrix tablet. So it is not for uh, other preparation formulation. Okay. So yeah, you said ODT. Why ODT? Isn't there anything else that you can determine? Sorry, ma'am. I don't hear. How do you say it is only for ODT, not any other kind of a tablet? Yeah, it is for ODT is a mattress tablet control system. This is yeah, but uh, by the method of direct compression. So these uh, the diagrams give the visual uh, representation. Give the visual representation of those excipients or API uh, which are uh, directly compressible. So these are the factors zero uh, to ten. If the fact of if the value is more than five, then it is good for compression. If it is less, then it is not good for compression. Okay. Does the shape also have any influence on the compressibility? Yes, yes. The, as the, the greater the area, then it is a good. If the area of the the diagram that we get, poly, uh, we can say the poly, polygon diagram or whatever we get, if the area is less, then it is not good for compression. There are the limits. Okay. All right. So, what all parameters have you uh, studied? So, ma'am, uh, as you can see, there the... are the fifteen factors. No, no. I just want to know for the ODT, what all factors you have evaluated? Uh, these are the fifteen parameters that you I have studied. Made... Uh, uh, sorry, ma'am. For the ODT tablet, what all parameters have you studied? Saturation solubility, something you have mentioned that. Yes, first. yes, uh, yeah. Saturation solubility and in vitro dissolution studies. So, 
so i found that uh, once the nebula fund is prepared in a solid dispersion then its solubility is uh, enhanced uh, it is a solid ph dependent solubility uh, i have found that and uh, it's in vitro resolution that i have seen Thank you, PO fifty three. Sarika, ma'am, you have any questions? No, you can move on. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to call PO fifty four for the presentation. Hello, I am uh, audible. Yes, you are audible. We are sharing your PPT. We are sharing your poster. Ah. Your poster has been shared. You can start. Okay. Good afternoon, all. Uh, my topic name is extraction and utilization of various power extracts as a herbal indicator in acid crystallization. Generally, indicators are the dyes or the pigments that can be isolated from multiplicity of sources like animals, fungi, algae. Uh, and uh, help in uh, determining the end point of the reactions. The, here we use the Rosa Galia red rose uh, that is known as due to uh, due to uh, red rose uh, extract, uh, which is generally uh, uh, used uh, alcohol solvent. Uh, ethanol is used as a solvent due to the instability of water extract. After that, uh, we concentrated it and made uh, various solutions. Uh, we have assortments of flowers like wing rose, hibiscus, primaria, passiflora, yellow marigold, orange marigold, nerium, spathodea, and delonyx laser. They all uh, can act as an herbal indicator. Now we move towards the experimental data. Here we collected fresh roses and then uh, separated their petals, dried it in hot air oven. After that, we uh, started with maceration. After uh, that, uh, we created uh, prepared residue of filtrate and lastly, uh, so indicators made with the dilutions. Now we move towards the result and discussion part. Uh, there are many four types of uh, acid base titrations uh, that are strong acid, strong base, strong acid, weak base, weak acid, and strong base. And last one is weak acid and weak base. Uh, the here we use the alcoholic extract of uh, red rose as an indicator of uh, here and the. Uh, Color change uh, after addition of indicator, as we show uh, here in the figure, that is uh, pink to yellow. The mean blue reading for strong acid and strong base is uh, 22 ml. Likewise, the, all the, uh, we get the all result from various titration. Here, uh, so in uh, table number two, color change in strong acid and strong base titrations, like uh, alcoholic extracts of uh, various flowers, and the color change after addition of indicator and uh, color change at the end point. Like uh, in uh, pink roses, uh, color change after addition is pink and uh, color change at the end point is yellow. Uh, likewise, though we conclude our topic. Uh, this shows and uh, uh, this uh, study shows that this indi herbal indicator also can be used instead of chemical uh, indicators as our methodology involves screening of uh, ethanolic extract or alcoholic extracts uh, in four main uh, types of acid base titration it can be beneficial uh, to use herbal indicator instead of uh, chemical indicators the benefit of this work is that it can be given as an experiment to undergraduate students mainly they can prepare the herbal indicator solution you for steel. 54 your time okay. is up last line uh, the benefit of this works is that it can be given as an experiment to undergraduate students they can prepare the uh, herbal indicator solutions or sticks and use them in their analysis uh, laboratory experiment and providing an enriched uh, learning experience thank you thank you po54 the session is now open for q &A. Uh, so here, which group is responsible for that color change? Uh, mainly, ma'am, uh, there are various literature work is uh, present on this topic, but uh, the main constituent uh, which uh, representing color change is uh, mainly the anthocyanin. Okay, so when you have uh, macerated and collected the solution, have you quantified anything? Uh, no, ma'am. Because being a, a natural source or herbal source, 
every time uh, will you get the same concentration which would be sufficient uh, for that color change no ma'am it is difficult to get the same concentration uh, so based on this my next question is then how much is a minimum uh, concentration required for that thing correct uh, miss uh, how much concentration is required to show the color change ma'am here we use uh, means uh, uh, we optimize some things like uh, we uh, uh, the indicator solution made with the dilutions we use various uh, quantities like 0.5 ml 1 ml then uh, one drop four drops likewise we optimize it and conclude to 0.5 ml as we increase the ml size means we increase the ml of uh, indicators that we add uh the intensity of color is increases but is there a way to standardize these uh, indicators because as madam said with each batch the quality will vary sometimes ah, the yes. anthocyanins may be more sometimes they may be less so is there a way by which we can uh, modify them ma'am uh, generally we can use various method like uh, if you want to quantify then uh, i will search ma'am if you don't remember this okay i think we we can move on thank you ma'am thank you thank you po 54 thank you judges now i would like to call po 55 for the presentation yes okay po 55 you are sharing your poster okay po 55 your poster has been shared you can start um, i can not see the whole poster like can you display the whole poster because yeah it's okay now yeah. thank you so uh, hello good afternoon everyone my poster code is p055 and i'm going to present on pnta cross from beta cyclotestin and sponges for the oral drug delivery so beta cyclotestin and sponges are colloidal and cross link nanocarrier comprising of solid fish like structure with nano cavities for encapsulation of complex lipophilic and hydrophilic chemical substances so drug which is having a uh, nationally optimized vessels for drug which is having a low solubility will also uh, give a very limited absorption so when the drug solubility is been increased hence the bioavailability will also increase which will in turn increase the therapeutic efficacy and also the feel of the drug on the market hence our drug which is the cardapen which is a uh, anti antihypertensive drug with a bcs class 2 and bioavailability of 40% hence to increase the physical chemical properties of the cardapen Uh, we just do this thing. The uh, base and sponges would be suitable for increase the to increase the solubility of the drug, also increasing the bioavailability and decreasing the dose reduction. And now moving on to the preparation, where we just do this thing and PMK have been uh, used in documents ratio of one to four and regard. Uh, the FDR and BC and HCR studies. Formulation was that the um, nanosponges were then blended with the HCT and then uh, they were then uh, granulated with the starch product where it was then loaded with the loaded in the capsule. The solubility was then increased with the solubility was compared to almost to one particular point of increase in the solubility and interaction efficiency was calculated. This was then. Also, the uh, reduced rate. So your basic medium, that is, the pH of your blood was very less as compared to the uh, phosphate marker of pH six point eight, where the release was almost up to eighty six point nine six percent and uh, eighty seven point nine six percent at the eight hours. So uh, here, the quantity of studies were um, done with the um, uh, and hence here the uh, drug that is the part of it and the side effect. So then the interactions were done further with the hydrogen bonding, with the non-hydrogen hydrogen bonding, and also with the uh, yeah uh, with the sigma and pi. So this was my summary of the time. Your time is yeah okay. Thank you, Pio. Yeah, yeah, I'm done with the session. Yes. The session is now open for Q and A. Actually, her voice was not very clear. She was losing yes, her mind. Yes, ma'am. 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, ma'am, can I just uh, present it once again? No, no, no. You need not. We'll just. Okay. You have mentioned interrupt deficiency of about 96%. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, with what ratio did you achieve this? Sorry, ma'am. Uh, like we uh, achieved that one is to four ratio, that is uh, 1 was of a cyclotex free and uh, 4 ratio was of uh, a cross window, which is PLD. Okay. Generally, we don't get that much efficiency. So, high, what do you think? Yes. What would be the reason of such a high entrapment efficiency? Uh, Madam, because of the uh, cross neighbor, like because of the cross neighbor only, uh, we are getting so much higher of the efficiency. Actually, when we tried with once to two, also once to four, and once to six, so we eventually got the results. Uh, like even if more of the uh, uh, cycle, uh, the PMD has been used more, so it was sure only 75% of the order we are applying. Whereas in the once to two, it was like 85%. But what we saw is why the one is to four, it was twenty six percent. So we optimized for one is to four. And how much drug uh, was sustained? It, it it was a sustained release, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. So uh, have you done the uh, uh, dissolution study? What was the result? Right. Okay, eight okay, hours, eighty seconds. So, uh, yes, ma'am. Was it a biphasic release or it was gradual release? Uh, no, ma'am, the biphasic release. So, first, in the pH 1.2 and the first two hours, we found like 44%, but then it started increasing. So, in the pH of 6.8, it showed 87.96% of the release. And for 80 hours, 4 80 minutes. So, 46% was released within two hours. Uh, yes, ma'am. In the starting, in the starting. A pH 1.2. Yes. Almost 50%. Uh, Regardless, is having pH solubility, pH dependent solubility. Solubility. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. What it goes like? Is it soluble? Uh, ma'am, yes, uh, ma'am. Actually, it is soluble in the what? Uh, it is only 0 0.00247 mg per ml is in the water. And when we tested, it was uh, of 0 0.37 mg per ml. So when we uh, did with this technique, we got the results of 0 0.37 mg per ml in the water. Okay. No, I'm asking about pH dependent solubility. Uh, pH dependent, ma'am. Uh, actually, here we are aiming for the aqueous solubility only. Uh, so, uh, it is having very low aqueous solubility due to the BCS class 2. And hence, uh, we are like nanosponges are basically to increase the aqueous solubility. So, we are using this approach. Okay. Uh, my yes. side questions are all. Yes, yes, so you are uh, only uh, targeting aqueous solubility and yet you have carried out dissolution uh, in both 1.2 and 6.8 medium. So within two uh, hours, you have had almost about 50% of drug release. Hmm. Uh, actually, ma'am, yeah. Yeah, and then how much more later on? 987 in eight hours. Yes, ma'am. In the uh, phosphate buffer of pH 6.8. And in the burst, a burst release itself was, I mean, within two hours itself, there was about 50% of the drug that was. Yeah, released. 44, yeah, 44% of the release. So the graph was like in the, when we tested for the normal drug, the graph was like only in the uh, rise in the, uh, the cumulative release and then it was little stagnant. But when we tested for our formulation, then it started increasing. At some point it was increasing and then it started increasing more. So that what I mentioned that in the like almost in the pH of 1.2 it was 44, but then it started increasing and increasing, giving for eight hours of solubility. Dissolution, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right.
फाइन ऑल राइट यस मैम थैंक यू पीओ 55 अ थैंक यू जजेस so that was the last presentation poster for the today uh, for phd and uh, pg category uh, judges i would like to ask you to provide a brief message for our participants regarding the session okay so participants you all have all presented very well it was a very extensive presentation and it has taken us a lot of time and a lot of uh, understanding a lot of thinking to actually shortlist even 25 posters and all these 25 26 posters who have presented today have also been very very good they were shortlisted from the uh, whatever we had received earlier so yesterday also we have spent about 2 hours and today also we have spent about 3 hours so it has been an extensive work even for us to even finalize who should be the winner we have not added up the scores yet so in spite of whoever is the winner all of you have done a lot of hard work you have put in a lot of efforts and your efforts are well appreciated keep it up thank you so much swati mittar ma'am uh ma'am would you like to say something Yeah, I have same thoughts. What Nam has already expressed. So uh, we could hear a lot of good studies today, and other posters were. It was really difficult for us to uh, shortlist them, as Nam said. Uh, and uh, those who are presented today, they have done a quite a good job. And uh, those who are planning to do to take that study ahead, my best wishes for them. Uh, so all the very best to complete that study and publish it in a good paper that is what i can wish for uh, uh, so all the very best and i also like to uh, thank uh, team bncp uh, dr munira ma'am and uh, lokesh sir also for inviting us here so thank you very much and uh, i wish all the very best to uh, participants and congratulation to team bncp thank you very much sarika madam and swati madam and arti madam your inputs your suggestions i'm sure student uh, it was a learning opportunity for students also and it was a wonderful presentation i saw uh, students from uh, all different um, institutes and different type of projects and poster they presented so that was a wonderful to see that so thank you uh, sarika madam and swati madam for uh, spending your uh, valuable time it's been a pleasure ma'am thank you so much for inviting us yes, thank you so much ma'am uh, so. ma'am uh, to all the judges thank you once again for gracing us with your presence and uh, giving your valuable time to us uh, i would like to present this small token of appreciation from the bncp team uh, thank you so much swati mittal ma'am thank you and sarika madam too thank you again i would like to thank uh, i'm very grateful for to the judges for gracing us with their presence and uh, for the insight uh, insightful inputs and also the appreciation which you gave to all the participants and to the team bnc we are very thankful for that and also i would like to thank all the participants without you all the uh, event was impossible thank you for presenting such brilliant research works and also uh, we'll be taking with this i'd like to conclude the session one for the day and we'll be taking a short break now and meeting at 2:30 pm 
for the UG category poster presentation competition. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So we can leave now, right? Uh, yes, ma'am, you can leave. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yeah, they went away. Okay, thank you. Everyone, those who all are leaving, please rejoin at 2.30 p.m.
Harita Madam is joining in, in a minute, a short while. Instead of Bhagwati Madam, as she is uh, being allocated with some other urgent work, she'll be doing her work, actually, judging this along with you. In pronounce, no, not pronounce. Yes, Student, I think we should start now. It's time. Harita Madam is also there. Hello, Harita sir. Madam. Hello, Pranav sir. Hello, sir. Students? Am I audible, students? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if all the judges are ready, we yes, can sir. start. Please ask judges, particularly Pranav sir and ma'am, Harita ma'am. Pranav sir, Harita ma'am, uh, can we start? <laughs> judges, yes. can we start? Okay, so good afternoon, one and all present here. I, Nikita Pura, 
would like to welcome back everyone to the second day of the third student research congress organized by SVKM's Dr. Banube Nanavati College of Pharmacy, co-hosted by Mumbai University, uh, industry partner ECG Worldwide and SciTech Center. Now we will be having the poster presentation competitions of UG category that will be starting shortly. I request all the participants to be ready. Okay, so now we'll begin with the poster presentation competition of the UG category. The judges are, our first judge is Dr. Pranav Shah Sir. Sir is currently associated with Malibu Pharmacy College, Bardoli, Gujarat as a professor in pharmaceutics. Sir has pursued his B Pharm, M Pharm and PhD degree from the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda. Before joining academics, Sir has also been associated with reputed companies like IPCA, Glenmark, Macloids as a research scientist. Sir has published over 50 research and review articles and several book chapters in national and international journals. Sir has also been peer reviewer for several journals. His selected achievements include Awarded travel grant of rupees 30,000 by Council of Scientific and Industrial Research for oral presentation at 10th International Conference and Exhibition on Pharmaceutics and Novel Drug Delivery Systems, UK. Sanctioned minor research project by UK Tarsadia University worth rupees 1 lakh. He has been awarded a travel grant of 1 lakh rupees by Indian Council of Medical Research for oral presentation at Nanotech France 2015. So has been sanctioned minor research project by Gujarat Council of Science and Technology, Department of Science and Technology of worth rupees 1,27,000 in 2015. Research associated in UGC project entitled Transmucosal Drug Formation Using Epithelial or Endothelial Cell Lines. Now, our second judge for today is Dr. Harita Desai Mam. Ma'am is currently associated with Bombay College of Pharmacy as Associate Professor and Research Investigator. Ma'am completed her B.P.R.M. From, from Bombay College of Pharmacy, Mumbai, India. She acquired her Master's Degree in Drug Delivery Technology from Institute of Chemical Technology, Matunga, Mumbai, and her PhD degree in Pharmaceutics from Institute of Chemical Technology. She developed systems like antiseptic solutions, oral fast disposable tablets, topical moisturizing lotion, and perennial formulation with commercial applications. She has many research review articles and book chapters in national and international journals. Her research fields of interest include application of nanotechnology and supramolecular chemistry in designing innovative drug delivery systems, solubility enhancement of poorly soluble synthetic and herbal actives, and exploring innovative applications of food-derived nutraceuticals and biomolecules in drug delivery and waste management. Ma'am is a regular reviewer to international peer-reviewed journals like the Future, of, Future Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences, an international journal of pharmaceutical sciences and research. Ma'am is also the member of several professional bodies like Indian Pharmaceutical Association, 
Society of Pharmaceutical Dissolution Sciences, Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, PPACS India Chapter. Now moving on to the next judge, Dr. Pravin Kale sir. Sir is currently associated with SVKM's Dr. Banubin Nanavati College of Pharmacy, Mumbai, as an associate professor in the Department of Pharmacology. He completed his graduation and post-graduation in M. Pharm Pharmacology from, from University of Pune. He completed his PhD from NMIMS University, Mumbai. Sir has academic experience of over 18 years and industry experience of two years. Sir is published over 30 research and review articles in national and international reputed journals. Sir has received several grants totaling more than 6 lakhs Indian rupees, which include consultancy research project by Sage GS Medical College and KM Hospital Parel, Mumbai, titled Brain Monoamine Estimations in Given Samples, which amount to 82,000 rupees. Mumbai University Minor Research Grant 60,000 rupees was awarded for the project titled Assessment of Tartanic Acid and Chlorinol Combination Approach in the Treatment of Alzheimer's Disease. Consultancy Research Project by Sage GS Medical College K and KM Hospital Mumbai, Paril. Evaluation of the role of Vinthania somnifera and Silatris paniculatus in animal models of alcohol addiction amount to 1,40,332 rupees. University of Mumbai research grant of 38,000 rupees was awarded for the project entitled Effect of Caffeine Combination either with Buripropion or Dulozetine on Anorexia Nervosa. He was awarded the International Travel Grant Young Scientist which was an award of rupees 1,25,894 from Scientific and Engineering Board, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India to attend Cell Symposia Translational Neuroscience. He was felicitated by University of Mumbai with a silver medal and a certificate for holding second position in the Medicine and Pharmacy Teacher category at the university level Avishkar Research Convention. With a heavy heart, I would like to welcome the judges and felicitate them with a bouquet. Now, before beginning, I would uh, like to uh, present the participants with the instructions. Please read the instructions carefully. Rename yourself as per the allotted codes. If not already done, participants cannot reveal their name or affiliation. Each presenting author will be given a time of two minutes for presentation. Follow the time limit and kindly do not exceed. Only the presenting author will be allowed to answer in the Q&A session. Each participant is requested to stay alert for their roll call. With the permission of the judges, I would like to start a poster presentation competition of the UG category. So, ma'am, can we start? Hello, yeah, we can start. So, I hope you have received your scorecard. All the judges. Yeah, yeah, I have received. Yes, yes, I have taken print also, I am ready. Okay, sir, all right. So, for the first post presentation competition, I would like to call PUG1. PUG1. Yes. Okay, we'll share your poster. Your poster has been presented. You have a time of two minutes. Kindly start. Yes, thank you. Hello, greetings. So my topic for the poster is microneedles for luliconazole, a boon approach in the treatment of fungal infection. This poster briefly describes the effects, advantages of the luliconazole microneedles and consequently the dissolving patches. These visible needles or microneedles are poised to the usher in an era of pain-free injections. Microneedles are encapsulating the drug and thus the drug dissolves and degrades in the skin at a prolonged and sustained rate. This could be a paradigm shift in the management of fungal infection. The two major objectives are to modify and bring about a novel approach in designing formulations for fungal infections 
and to obtain a higher bioavailability and a rapid onset of action. Microneedles from nuliconazole can prove to be a boon approach in the rapid relief from fungal infestation. According to the WHO, fungal infections are everlasting health challenges and these fungal infections could bring about great financial as well as medical burdens. However, the strong penetrability of the microneedles helps in greater bioavailability of antifungal agents by bypassing the stratum corneum. Liliconazole belongs to a BCS class 2 drugs and thus it has a lower solubility and a higher permeability. And designing an oral formulation would be a challenge. The material and method for these microneedles would be Liliconazole 1%, natural biodegradable polymer 10%, PEG that is polyethylene glycol which is a plasticizer, PGA, polyglutamic acid, which is a supporting polymer. And for it to be dissolving microneedles, we require solid maltose. What would be the evaluation and characterization parameters? Besides physicochemical characterization, in vitro skin insertion, mechanical strength of the microneedles, ex vivo skin retention, and the drug release from microneedles using Franz diffusion cell. And Please analytical. One, your time is over. You can conclude. Okay, to conclude, I would say that Liliconazole can prove to be a suitable candidate and a promising molecule in the treatment of variety of fungal infection and in future scope, hydrogel microneedles of Liliconazole can be prepared and formulated to be a choice of treatment for tinea fungal infections. These are the references for my poster. Thank you. Thank you, PUG1. The session is now open for Q&A. Sarita ma'am and Pranav sir, please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Sir. Yes. yes sir. Okay, uh, tell me, uh, have you done any lead study of lulicanazole? Uh, no sir, not yet, no lead studies. This is just a proposal. Okay, okay. And uh, any, any other characterization tests you have done? Uh, no, sir, but we can go for FTIR or uh, reverse phase HPLC. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, could you comment on the dose of uh, luticanazole? How have you selected or what is the dose uh, selection criteria? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so when we go to see in the market, uh, luliconazole 1% hydrogels are available and 1% um, of luliconazole will be suffice for a, a better efficacy in fungal infection. Okay, and any comparative marketed formulations? Uh, right now, there are as such, um, uh, right now studies for ketoconazole clinic, there have been going for microneedles for ketoconazole, but yet I don't think there is any approval or so. And comparative studies, um, there have been tablets of lulicon uh, uh, luliconazole. So I don't think there has been microneedles. So comparison of particularly luliconazole as a candidate is not uh, there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Here, my simple question is, uh, is it cost effective? Because you are using all this, whatever uh, you are proposing, sir, will it be cost effective? Than uh, no, options. Uh, no, sir, it wouldn't be cost effective, but yes, if we go to see the, uh, the technique we use is micro molding, that is PDM, is polydimethylsilyoxane molds. So yes, it wouldn't be that much cost effective, but nowadays we can see that novel drug delivery system can provide control, better release and a, a greater like uh, amphotericin if we compare. So liposomal injections are also not as cheaper uh, but liposomal amphotericin B is also costlier. However, its efficacy is great. So uh, cost effectiveness would be a challenge for the same sum. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you, judges. Thank you, PG1. Now I would like to call PUG2. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we would present Can your I poster. Yes, one minute. We'll present your poster. Okay, your poster is presented. Your time starts. 
Good noon to one and all present here. My topic is formulations of thermonic base SO for women healthy skin. In my present research, I formulated the SO by using turmeric and the major ingredients are turmeric, multanimity, rice powder, rose petals, olive oil gel and the coconut oil. For this preparation, first the soap base was melted by double boiling method. Next, the above mentioned ingredients were then added. After the mixture was once stirred, the olive oil gel and coconut oil were added in the solution. Finally, after the slight cooling, the soap solution was poured in the soap base mold. Benefits. Turmeric soap can reduce skin inflammation, ready, repair the damage of skin. It can also fight against elements that cause fine lines, wrinkles, dark spots, and it also moisturizes the skin. This, this soap helps to exfoliate skin naturally. It removes the dead cells and it nourishes the skin. This or it does not contain all turmeric. It contains other natural ingredients beneficial for the skin are also added. This is the picture of my preparation on the product. Finally, the conclusion, turmeric soap is more beneficial to our skin. These soaps are made with turmeric, which has been used as a remedy for generation. It comes to certain skin concerns. These herbal soaps are even better than natural turmeric as they contain other elements that are extremely beneficial to our skin. Future plan. My future plan is to make a startup business which is more beneficial to the skin with the natural ingredients. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, PUG2. The session is now open for QA. Hello. Yes. Sir. Hello, uh, did you do the pH evaluation of your soap which you have prepared? Yes, sir, I prepared with the concentration. The pH have you is... evaluated the pH? What is the pH of your soap? The pH of the soap is 7 to 8, sir. 7 to 8. How did you evaluate it? I, when I preparing the solution, I, uh, I evaluated the pH by using, by using the pH per person. You have used pH meter, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and what is the source of uh, this turmeric? This turmeric is using for long generations for more health benefits. So, this... So, you are using this, this turmeric or turmeric powder which is already available in our uh, household? No, sir, natural turmeric. I'm using this from the natural turmeric. Okay. Okay, fine. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Over to other judges. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes, yeah. I'm audible. Any optimization trials you have taken for your formula where you have added all this aloe vera gel and coconut oil and all? Yes, ma'am. So, how many formulas did uh, give you the final formulation? I used seven to eight uh, formulas, ma'am, with okay. the with the uh, correct concentration. Okay, that because all that optimization table is not placed here. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. My once again, that question uh, related to the previous poster. Uh, same. First of all, how it is better than existing marketed preparation. There are so many soaps available in the market having turmeric in their Sir, compared, compared to market uh, soaps, this soaps is more beneficial, which is not causing any harmful. I'm talking this, about uh, soaps this. which has turmeric inside. Turmeric quality soaps both are already available here. So, how it is unique, better than them. And Sir, I do I appreciate you your effort. Huh? It's really good approach, but uh, I want to know your preparedness as well. Say so I used turmeric with more beneficial ingredients. So this is not uh, this is unique with other uh, soaps. How it is unique or better than that? Sir, I I not only use turmeric. I used more uh, be beneficial products, which is not. Have you heard Nirma soap? Nirma Saundarya Saban Chandan Haldi Vegara mix kiya jata hai usme. So how it is? Yeah, that soap is better or yours is better than? 
Sir, my soap is even better than other soaps. These soaps contain all natural products, which is more beneficial to our skin, not causing any harmful effects without using any chemicals. They do claim same, dear. They do claim same thing. That's what I'm saying. Children, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, PUG2. Thank you, judges. Now I would like to call PUG3. Thank you, ma'am. PUG3. Am I audible, ma'am? Okay. Yes, we will share your poster. Yeah. Yeah. Your poster has been shared. Your time starts. Yeah, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My concept is Moyo Moyo etiology, could control through allium satego. Moyo Moyo disease is a rat progressive cerebrovascular disorder caused by blocked arteries at the base of bread in an area called basal ganglia. Uh, it is typically known as atherosclerosis. The arteries from carotid on the cere cerebral vessels will be blocked by the multiple growth of sclerosis due to a high amount of fatty acid synthesis. The excess amount of cholesterol will deposit inside the blood vessels, so the vessels become narrow. Uh, my aim is how we could control or cure the moyamoy etiology by the help of allium or direct process of drugs. Uh, moyamoy as an anti-cholesterol agent like Alizin, diallyl, allyl propyl, diallyl sulfate, diethyl thiosulfonate. The hypovolic extract of pulp or old garlic have a potential activity. Uh, fresh or aged garlic uh, extract contains compounds such as diallyl, allyl propyl, diallyl sulfate with potential anti cholesterol, which is cholesterol lowering properties. It helps in, as a drug for cerebrovascular atherosclerosis and moyo moyo disorders. Uh, the drugs which are derived from allium satin that should be reduced the cholesterol level or fatty acid synthesis it would inhibit the fatty acid synthesis so it is more uh, important uh, it is more easy to uh, comparing other treatment my conclusion is moya moya can be treated even some other clinical way such as angiogenesis which are creating new blood vessels from pre-existing vessels but it is not possible for poor or middle class family peoples they could not afford this type of uh, uh, treatments so they can afford like this type of derived medicines even they don't need to do any surgery also thank you okay the session is now open for q a hello <laughs> Have you prepared the alcoholic yeah. extract? So I haven't prepared, but I have read I don't know article, so I have mentioned. Have you prepared the alcoholic extract or I mean no, is sir. this a research work or it's a review? So you while can can you ask one more time? Uh, have you uh, done some research work or it is just a compilation of the literature? Yes, sir. This is just, just, just I didn't do any research. Okay, fine, fine. So uh, what uh, what do they what does the literature suggest? It's useful in uh, what kind of uh, brain stroke? What sir? Is it useful in brain stroke? Ah, yes, sir. It is useful in brain stroke. Okay. Can you highlight the mechanism involved? Uh, sir, these compounds of which are diallyl allyl disulfide, it would act as a narrow spectrum, so it would inhibit the synthesis of high amount of cholesterol or um, the, this type of drugs will bind it, the receptor which are uh, deposit on the cholesterol, so it, it, it removes the cholesterol. Okay, thank you. 
thank you sir uh, over to at, other judges at what dose range will be uh, any mention about the dose range no uh, no dose ranges if, if, if you are going to prepare this type of medicine then only we should analyze how we should, we should know about the dose ranges okay and, and action mechanism can you elaborate on the action mechanism how it shows the activity the drugs will bind the receptor and it will remove the cholesterol which are deposited on the blood vessels uh, the those cholesterol will involve in degradation of uh, fatty fat fats okay thank you thank you i'm missing the as you said something it is based on research or is it review or research because it seems it's you have done some review yes sir i'm expecting an answer yes sir this is a review okay okay so i'm answering okay how chalo do it is a review how do you uh, consider that it all, all these uh, chemical constituent present here or shown here are having lipophilicity able ability to cross triple b so i have uh, read the article and books also even it has it has been proved by various research scholars because it it's anti cholesterol agent are approximately reduce the cholesterol level 20 percentage at, at while we are consuming as a uh, natural garlic so why don't we do why don't we prepare a drug what i have asked have you got the question or not have you cross check their lipophilicity uh, theoretically what i mean no sir okay thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you, PUG three. I would now like to call PUG four. PUG four. Moving ahead, PUG five. am i am i audible ma'am yes will present your poster sure you can begin your time starts good afternoon to all <clears throat> my topic is uh, co crystallization technique and let's see the introduction recent discovery shows that most of the drug around 60 to 70% are fall under the bcs classification second and the bcs classification four they have the related issue like the solubility therapeutic and efficacy need of today era is to decrease the problem regarding solubility and permeability of available drug with different methods multiple component crystals like solvates hydrates co crystal salts contribute to key role in the design of near solid mainly in pharmaceutical area crystallization is nothing but uh, but uh, just uh, alteration of the uh, physical properties by modifying the drug at molecular level co crystal are multiple component molecule uh, structure where all the component are at stoichiometric ratio and compromises of two or more chemically different molecules so uh, physiological of the pro uh, physiological properties can be altered by using uh, the co crystals and it alter uh, the melting point stability stability uh, solubility and viability as shown in the figure let's see the uh, difference between the co crystal and the eutretic mixture in co crystal the enthalpy advantage outweigh anisotropy loss but in case of eutretic mixture enthalpy uh, gain outweigh when the enthalpy loss uh, co crystal are uh, always crystalline but in case of eutretic uter uh, mixture they are not uh, always uh, crystalline primary supramolecular growth unit should be at least three molecule but in case of uh, eutretic mixture uh, uh, it has the finite heterodiameter when in case of necrorindel with the crystal packing shape compatible uh, compatible found 
but in case of nacoronidal without a packing shape completely does not con uh, contain two eutretic uh, point and a region of uh, co crystal uh, maximum between the two point but in case of eutretic mixture the dsc thermal data for eutretic mixture result in a class fifth shape where the minimum you point of fifth your time is up yes ma'am you can yes, conclude the conclusion is that in the uh, past decade co crystal engineering has becoming a promising approach to improve the performance of drug substances by modifying and undesirable uh, uh, and uh, desirable physiological changes large number of pharmaceutical co crystal have been reported and some of them have been approved by fda or in the clinical trials yes ma'am thank you pug5 the question session is now open for q and a Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes. Uh, what What are the advantages that co crystals will offer? Do Do they improve the solubility? Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, it increases its solubility by uh, changing its uh, physical character. And not the changing the chemical stability or the chemical character. Does uh, do you do you feel that uh, ed, I mean making a co crystal will change yes, the sir. molecular structure of the drug or is it just a physical change? Sir, it's just a physical change. Uh, not a uh, ultimately uh, it does not change its molecular changes. Any. So it is just a physical change that will help to improve the solubility. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Okay, okay. And what are the characterization techniques of co-crystals? Sir, uh, uh, mm, characterization techniques like the X-ray diffraction method, uh, 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 and there is a diffraction uh, scanning colorimetry, and uh, etc. So, what change will you observe in the XRD pattern? sir i haven't yet uh, uh, any experiment on that and i will no no but what is expected i mean when you have a drug as such and when you pre prepare a co crystal what is expected in the xrd pattern sir uh, uh, there is a uh, some changes in the xrd pattern there is a uh, when we uh, the three uh, solvents and co formers and uh, Uh, drug are taken uh, and uh, there is a graph uh, yes sir okay okay thank you thank you yeah over yes. to other judges hello can you comment on the bonding characteristic of co crystals ma'am uh, the it uh, it form the bond by the uh, non interaction by the different hydrogen hydrogen bonding and van der waal forces and uh, what is the regulatory status for co crystals regulatory status ma'am it's just a uh, ma'am is it a new to, drug uh, is it a new drug so co crystallization when it is applied for regulatory approval is it considered as a new drug or it is considered as just an extension of the existing drug ma'am is just a extension of existing uh, existing drug by uh, changes uh, certain physical changes in that okay thank you okay ma'am thank you uh, no questions from my end thank you sir okay, okay. thank you judges thank you pug5 now i would like to call pug6 pug6 yes yes ma'am ma'am can you hear me Yes, we will present your poster. Yes, ma'am. Your time starts. 
Uh, good afternoon, one and all present here. So today I'm going to uh, present on a topic innovation is meant in healthcare. So uh, uh, specifically depression. So depression is nothing but a state wherein the person is uh, undergoing symptoms like neurovegetative, neurocognitive and uh, psychological symptoms. So uh, we'll be focusing on four key areas of innovations. Uh, so first one is esketamine. Esketamine is nothing but a S enantiomer of uh, ketamine. So ketamine is nothing but a dissociative general anesthetic. So esketamine is a better version of uh, uh, ketamine and uh, it has been tested in PMDD uh, patients having PMDD and uh, treatment resistant uh, depression and it has po uh, shown positive results. The second one is the NMD, NMD receptor blockers. So uh, conventionally we have uh, NMD, uh, conventionally we have molecules like fenzaclidin and other molecules that are acting non-selectively to NMD receptor blockers but a novel approach would be uh, action on the uh, GLUN2 subunits of the NMD receptors. So, uh, 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 therefore, the molecule uh, uh, will be having lesser side effects. The third one is uh, digital symptom tracking. So, in this, basically, we'll be having a wearable device which will be uh, taking control and uh, tracking all the symptoms. Uh, uh, and uh, it will be taking into consideration the digital biomarkers like circadian rhythm, sleep wake cycle, and other uh, uh, lo like location also. The fourth one will be uh, digital pills. So digital pills specifically, will, I'll be talking about Abilify My Site. It's a digital pill which was like launched in 2012 and it was approved in 2018 by FDA. So basically here, uh, uh, there will be a non-medical uh, patch that will be attached and it will be having a Bluetooth uh, uh, device. It will be connected to the pill as in when the pill is injected by the patient. Uh, the Bluetooth device will log in with the patient's uh, uh, pill and the dosing intervals and dosing uh, time specifically will be uh, lo uh, lo uh, stored in the smartphone app. So this is how the uh, uh, clinicians can uh, take care of the uh, uh, patient compliance also. So uh, last but not the least, depression is a social uh, and a cultural responsibility. Uh, we should also, uh, like, uh, if we if we have a positive approach to burst depression, the uh, there will be uh, there will surely be a reduction in the depression symptoms, and the patient will be cured nicely. Thank you. The session is now open to Q and A. Hello. Yes, sir. You discussed about several new molecules which can be used in depression, right? Yes, sir. So, uh, any idea about what kind of dosage forms uh, can they be formulated into? Sir, like esketamine is a nasal do nasal spray. So, uh, that is a dosage form that is being prepared for uh, like the novel, uh, like for the okay. new drugs. Uh, why, why nasal? What advantage will it give? Sir, because uh, as we know that the nasal receptors basically are in direct, uh, like the nasal root is direct contact with the uh, brain, uh, uh, brain, this thing. So that is why uh, there will be better action and a better bioavailability of the drug. That is why. Okay, okay, that's all from my side. Yes, sir. Could you suggest any alternative therapies that is combined with the medicinal therapy for treatment? So, I, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, I can talk about palliative care that can be taken, uh, like. Uh, that can be taken into consideration. Like along with depression, some sessions that can be hold, cross-cultural research programs can be held basically, uh, wherein uh, the patient is like, uh, wherein small, small groups of patients uh, have been formed and the only uh, one, uh, 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 one person or one clinician will be assigned to 10 patients. So this is how they can keep, uh, take care of uh, all the symptoms and the severity of the depression. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. My first question is, do you know what is anhedonia? And second question, the types of depression in both. Uh, actually, there are two types. Is this esketamine useful in both the types? Uh, sir, uh, esketamine as in it's a novel drug. So, uh, like, what is anhedonia, dear? Uh, sorry, sir, I don't know more about it. It's a prominent symptom of uh, depression. Eh? That's a hallmark kind of. Remember. And second one uh, is esketamine useful in both major depression as well as bipolar depression. So yes, they can be used in both. Yes, sir. Esketamine can be used in both. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, judges. Thank you, PUG six. I would now like to call PUG seven. PUG seven. Mm -hmm. Hello, Yaman. 
PUG eight. Yeah, ma'am. PUG eight. Yes, we'll present your poster. Ma'am, I'm, I'm audible. Yes. My presentation topic is in vitro anti-inflammatory and anti-venom activities of the PUG eight. So yeah, ma'am. Just a second. We are presenting your poster. Okay, okay, ma'am. You can you present your poster because on our side it is showing a blank page. Sorry, ma'am. I can't hear you. Can you present your yeah. poster? Okay, wait. It's come. Ah, it's yeah, loaded. You can begin. You can begin. Your time starts. My presentation topic is in vitro anti-inflammatory and anti-venom activities of Zizophis marietanae. Zizophis marietanae is commonly known as Indian bear and it is edible. The leaves are used to treat digestive, hepatic, cardiovascular disorders and also used to treat snake bite. Inflammation is a reaction of tissues to injury. Inflammation is mediated by the uh, chemical mediators such as cytokine, histamine, etc. Uh, PLA2 commonly found in uh, commonly found in insects and snake bites, uh, which increases and presence of the activity. Arachidonic acid is released from the phospholipid membrane, which is reason for the inflammation and pain. Our plan of our plan of work starts from the successive solvent extraction of plant material by using salt apparatus followed by phytochemical screening and. Uh, Assessment of anti-inflammatory and anti-venom effect. Here the venom we use is Naja Kautia venom. Uh, we collect Zizibus maritana leaves from our district from the month of July and then followed by sol successive solvent extraction using petita, chloroform, etc. Here in the table one, uh, we uh, here in the table one we display the color, consistency, and percentage yield of the leaves in different solvent e extraction. In preliminary phytochemical screening, different phytoconstituents such as carbohydrates, terphenides, and phenolic compounds are identified, and methanol extract has an highest percentage yield and minimum of phytoconstituents. For in vitro studies, here we use three methods human red blood cell membrane stabilization method, inhibition of protein denaturalization method, and neutralization of anticoagulant activity. In table four, we briefly mention the concentration of the drug, optical density at 560 nanometer, and their uh, inhibition percentage inhibition of hemolysis using human red blood cell membrane stabilization method. Table 5 gives some detailed information about the inhibition naturalization by comparing the percentage inhibition of denaturalization with the viscosity. Here in figure 4, we made a mistake in the heading. The figure represents the neutralization of anticoagulant activity of Zizibus maritana leaves. We concluded that our finding shows potential anti-inflammatory and anti-venom activity. Further investigation are required to find the exact mechanism and using this medicine for a therapeutic purpose. Okay, thank you, PUG8. The session is Hello. to Q&A. Hello. Yes, yeah, PUG8. Hello. Yes, sir. Am I audible to you? Ah, yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay, uh, tell me, did you authenticate ah, yes, the plant? Did you authenticate the plant first? Ah, yes, ma'am. So you have carried out the authentication of the plant? Yes, ma'am, we authenticated our plant in Coimbatore Agricultural College from a board. Okay, good. Now, uh, why to stop till in vitro only when you know that it is a promising plant? You can go for in vivo activity as well. See, uh, you can do it in animals. So, what are your future ma plans? We are, in, uh, we are in starting stage of investigation. Okay. Uh, future plans are to do in vivo uh, as well as both okay. in vitro experiments using this plant, ma'am. Okay, now uh, these extracts, uh, what will be your final dosage form? I mean, how will you administer? Suppose you have successfully developed this, how are you going to administer this to the patient? Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. How are you going to administer this? Hello. Sir. Yeah. 
हेलो व्हाट विल बी द डोजेज फ्रॉम एंड व्हाट विल बी द रूट ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वी आर नॉट इनटू सच डेप्थ ऑफ दिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन वी नीड टू इन विट्रो एंड इन वाइवो एक्सपेरिमेंट्स फादर ऑन दिस प्लांट सर ओके 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू दैट्स ऑल फ्रॉम माय साइड हेलो इफ थैंक यू सर if you are standardizing your extract what would be the reference standards that you will be using um for the reference uh, we referred an article for selecting this plant and from that uh, we are interested in doing something new and challenging so we merge uh, no, anti inflammatory and anti veno activities of this plant and uh, you didn't get my question if you are standardizing the extract for its activity what will be the reference standards you will be using you shouldn't go in uh, such depth in our uh, investigation okay and can you elaborate on the action mechanism mechanism of action yeah the membrane the membrane stabilization process no mechanism of action contribute to potential anti inflammatory effect here we uh, stabilizes the membrane stabilization effect by the plant extract okay thank you no question from my end okay thank you judges thank you puj 8 i would now like to call puj 9 PUG 9 Good noon all of you present uh, today is my topic is medicinal wait, approaches wait, towards to... hello PUG 9 oh. just a second we are presenting a post Ma'am I have all Yes you can start now okay uh today's my uh, topic is uh, ma'am um, uh, may i uh, share this screen we have presented your poster i can share the link you can see the poster right on your side uh no ma'am hmm. asa if you want to share your poster you can do that we will stop sharing oh okay we stop share is it visible ma'am not yet can you try once again yeah yeah sure ma'am is it yes it is visible you can start your time starts uh my today's topic is medicinal approaches toward benefits of mimosa podica mimosa podica is a, is a annual uh, or a perennial uh, herb uh, it is also known as it is also known as uh, lajwanti namaskari lachalu and samipatra and uh, humble plant Uh, it has a height of uh, 45 to 90 cm and the leaves are arranged to 12 to 20 pairs it has two type of uh, leaf, leaf movements so first is stimulated by touch and heat and second one is periodical movement Uh, it is uh, uh, by uh, by california uh, as a uh, university of california research reports mimosa podica has uh, found as a non non toxic plant for human uses and uh, the biological constituents for uh, different medicinal activities of it are alkaloid coumarin flavonoids glycosides phenols terpenes and the mimosa podica gives so many pharmacological activities like anti diabetic anti oxidant anti convulsant anti microbial anti asthmatic anti ulcer hypoprotective wound healing activity and anti proliferative activity 
the uh, here 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 is the chart uh, that uh, the methanolic extract uh, of uh, root and shoot of mimosa podica we can use as a wound healing activity and methanolic extract of leaves we can use as a antimicrobial activity and methanolic crude extract of it can we can use as an antioxidant and uh, ethanolic extract of leaves we can use as an anti hepatotoxic activity and the responsible biological active constituent of it uh, of it also here are listed uh, the past medicinal approaches of mimosa podica were uh, wound healing boil treatment sinus piles urological disorders and the present medicinal approaches of mimosa podica are anti convulsant anti fertility anti bacterial anti ulcer anti malarial and antioxidant and the future medicinal approaches of mimosa podica may be uh, diabetic foot ulcer as the anti depressant and, and uh, aphrodisiac and uh, we are conclude that mimosa podica have so many different activities which is beneficial to uh, therapeutic purpose without any side effect so this review study will help to the new researchers for those who develop the formulations by using mimosa podica thank you thank you the session is now open for question and answers Hello. Yes, yeah, sir. PUG nine. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me uh, that according to you, is it beneficial to use a uh, part of the plant, or uh, do you suggest a single component? For example, say curcumin. Uh, what actually, sir. Different biological constituents are present in particular parts, so we can use the extract of part. Okay, so you mean to say uh, part of the plant should be used rather than single component? Uh, yes, extract of part. Okay, so which extract they have used? I mean, which extract has been used more? Uh, so uh, alcoholic extracts are mostly used. Okay, and they have so many activities which have been proved this plant. Yes. Okay. Uh, does it have any anti-cancer activity as well? Yes, sir. It has anti-proliferative uh, activities. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks from. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What are what is the active constituents which are responsible for the activity? So, uh, ma'am, uh, it is uh, already uh, already listed in the poster that uh, particular uh, biological constituents are uh, responsible for particular um, uh, disease. Like phenols are used uh, are responsible for wound healing activity. Uh, Topinoids, flavonoids are responsible for antimicrobial activities, and tannins and flavonoids are uh, responsible for antidiarrheal activities. And the other ones are also any specific constituent that is majorly responsible for the active or uh, all types of activities. Uh, ma'am, uh, mainly it uh, it concerns mimosin and uh, tergorin constituents uh, of mimosa podica, which is responsible responsible for uh, the all activities. Okay, thank you. So this plant seems like a. Treating all the most of disease disorders, isn't it? Yes, sir. So we should consider this as a VVIP drug. Am I right? Yes, sir. Why it is still been been neglected so much by Ayurveda even? Uh, sorry, sir. Why it has been so much neglected in even Ayurveda? I don't find it in. Ayurveda significantly used. Uh, <clears throat> Even I don't know, sir, because uh, my motto is also that that uh, the uh, the like people we are uh, like us uh, who uh, should be uh, aware from this uh, plant that uh, it has uh, so many activities and it is also it is also uh, finally uh, every second door of uh, uh, every second door in India, so we can use it, but people are not aware it. 
aware from it. So the answer is all these chemical constituents present are not that way highly significant attenuating these uh, these uh, disease or disorders. Okay, remember. ये तो विटामिन सी तो आपने सुना होगा ना विटामिन सी जिमिन बुस्टर है उससे कैंसर भी ठीक होता है लेकिन कभी ऐसा होता नहीं आई डू एग्री दैट दिस हैज टू बी फर्दर इवेलेटेड हर थैंक यू योर वर्क सिंस गुड थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू जजेस थैंक यू पीयूजी 9 आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू कॉल पीयूजी 10 पीयूजी 10 यस मैम Okay, we will present your poster. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, you are audible. One minute, we'll present your poster. Okay. Your poster is shared. You can start. My ah, poster is not shared.
Includes raw material suppliers all the way to the pharmacist, including ph uh, manufacturer, wholesaler, distributor. So recently, U.S. pharma firms have started utilizing the blockchain technology under the Act, that is, uh, Drug Supply Chain Security Act, which was signed in 2023, uh, 2013. So lately, India also realized the importance of technology in maintaining the integrity of supply chain. So it has passed a draft of uh, guidelines on June 2022 to affix a QR code on each packaging label of 300 drug brands. So QR code, when scanned, will give the information about the batch number, the expiry date, the GTIN, which is the global trade item number, serial number. The implementation of uh, serialization in European countries is similar to that of the blockchain in the US. So serialization is... Your time limit is up. You can conclude now. Okay, so I would like to conclude by saying that AI and blockchain will increase the tracking and visibility of the drugs, thereby uh, solving the problem of counterfeiting. Thank you. Thank you. The session is now open to Q. Hello. Yeah, PUG 11. Yes, sir. You have a very good idea for uh, the upcoming uh, era, but uh, do you think that will it increase the cost of uh, the medication? Sir, uh, uh, it will not increase the cost of the medication because the QR code that we will embed will be the part of the label. So I don't okay. think it will increase the cost, but if even if it increases, it will be compensated later on because the per, like customers. Uh, uh, belief on that product will increase and thereby the market share of that uh, company will go on increasing and within some years it will be compensated. And uh, what is the role of AI in this whole process? AI, like if we club uh, blockchain technology with the AI based app, it will become like only blockchain is a bit costlier, but if we include AI based app, it will become a bit uh, like cost effective. Can you give an example to explain? Uh, like, sir, the QR code that we will scan, the information about the like batch number, serial number, it will be, uh, we will see it on the AIST app. Okay. Yeah. But that uh, company who is uh, making counterfeit drugs can also have a similar kind of code. No, sir, it is very difficult to tamper. Like, if it is tampered, it will be detected. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, UG11. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. How will blockchain technology help in preventing this counterfeit drugs from uh, spreading? So, ma'am, if, uh, see, counterfeiting can occur at... Uh, like according to me, counterfeit can occur at two main uh, points. Like uh, during the transportation, there can be exchange of the actual products with the substandard or falsified products or the counterfeit products. And secondly, is uh, many a time so also the counterfeiting can take place at the wholesaler point. So, like we can like the network that is formed in the supply chain. They will uh, scan the QR code and we will be able to track the journey of our product. So if anyone is uh, trying to enter into this uh, business supply chain, it will be detected. It will be, uh, will it be applicable to all classes of drugs? Yes, it will be uh, applicable to all classes of drugs. Okay, thank you. My dear, really seems some kind of very interesting concept. Thank you, sir. The feasibility need to be checked. Uh, and the, as sir rightly said about the cost effectiveness, that need to be checked. Can you help me uh, in understanding the correlation between artificial intelligence and blockchain? How they will yes, help us to uh, avoid this counterfeiting in short? आपने बोला वो समझ में आया लेकिन एक्चुअल में जब हम प्रैक्टिकली करने जाएंगे तो देर आर फ्यू टेक्निकल डिफिकल्टीज 
तो सर ए आई इज बेसिकली वी कैन से इट इज द ब्रेन विल एनर्ज द प्रॉब्लम एंड इट विल गिव अस द लाइक द सिग्नल the blockchain technology it will the qr code will be scanned so if anything tampering is there it will be analyzed by the brain that is the ai and the signal will be passed and we will come to the uh, like if some issues is there in the supply chain okay thank you thank you sir thank you judges thank you pug 11 i would now like to call pug 12 pug 12 Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll present the poster. Am I audible? Yes, the poster is visible to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Present here. Uh, so. This topic for the poster presentation is the potential for artificial intelligence in healthcare. So basically, AI is the ability of the machine or uh, computer programs to carry out tasks that uh, require human beings to use their intelligence. Um, the study of computer systems attempt to uh, model and apply the intelligence of the human mind, which is uh, needed as well as uh, important also. Uh, so, uh, going to the what is the purpose of AI? Uh, why we have to use AI, uh, especially in the healthcare system? So, because artificial intelligence in healthcare can enhance uh, the prevention, uh, prevention care and quality of lives also, produce more accurate uh, diagnosis and uh, treatment plans uh, as uh, that we can uh, we can't uh, do with the human uh, uh, or uh, uh, labor and uh, leads to the be uh, better patient uh, outcomes overall. Uh, then uh, we comes uh, uh, we come to the part that uh, why there is a need of artificial intelligence why we want that so uh, first uh, and the main point is that it can make an emotional decision based on only data and statistics uh, planning is great but uh, nothing is done until the uh, work is executed uh, and um, uh, uh, if we come to the execution the thing is more important than uh, completing deliver on time and within budget um uh, then about uh, talking about this uh, community pharmacist uh, community pharmacist is uh, the profession or something which would be uh, in a direct access to the public and uh, whose duty are widely uh, sought after by the public and patients Uh, so uh, it uh, also helps in a sort analysis uh, sort analysis is um, uh, something uh, that uh, uh, that give the statistic planning and uh, uh, you must say management uh, sort itself means strength weakness opportunities and uh, threat analysis Uh, then, um, uh, what is the implementation of uh, this uh, artificial intelligence in uh, COVID-19? Uh, so, uh, uh, it uh, gives us a statistic planning or uh, track recovery uh, through the satellites or uh, GPS is the main uh, that we are using uh, today. Uh, social media, uh, etc. Like for example, we bank. We bank is uh, most probably used uh, in the uh, 21st century for this. Uh, AI can build an intelligence platform also. so uh, and uh, it's a, uh, okay ma'am so coming to the conclusion we can uh, say uh, okay ma'am <laughs> coming to the conclusion we can say ai and uh, the uh, other technology uh, of a one side of the life that always uh, interest and show the surprises with a new ideas topics and innovation product Uh, uh, innovation product etc ai also uh, in this 21st century Uh, uh, systems are automized or the computer automized so we can uh, use this uh, ai program and uh, i should uh, i think that this uh, uh, this is a most uh, important topic that we should uh, uh, keep on mind and keep on studying thank you thank you the session is now open to q and a hello yeah pug 12 yes, yes sir Uh, can you give example uh, where ai is used in pharmacy a specific example uh, uh we use uh, for uh, uh, basically for the prescriptions uh, is one uh, most uh, example is ibm uh, oncology which use each patients um, uh, medical information and the history 
treat uh, to recommend uh, to recommendate the personalized treatment plan means uh, uh, it use the um, um, uh, information or the history of the patient uh, and then according to that uh, treat the people so it is a uh, example of ai can give okay okay that's all from my side okay, thank you, you sir hello pug 12 hello uh yes ma'am yeah how will you validate this how will you validate the use of artificial intelligence in in pharma health care uh how will you gauge the effectivity how effective it is as compared to the other existing technologies uh artificial uh, intelligence uh, helps pharma companies uh for a clinical trials while uh, artificial uh, artificial intelligence can be used to make sense of a clinical trials data in a uh, more accuracy form that can't be done by uh, any other method any any standardization or any standards given for artificial intelligence by regulatory guidelines um there is a second ma'am uh, okay that will be okay thank you thank you ma'am no question from my end because already has been asked <laughs> thank you sir thank you judges thank you pug 12 i would now like to call pug 13 thank you pug yes, 13 yes ma'am yes okay we are present the poster is presented you can start okay Uh, our topic for poster presentation is 3d printed mouthpiece adapter for sampling exhaled breath in medical application uh, breath analysis is a rapid and non invasive uh, so it's less painful for the patient or a subject uh, it is made up of a resin which have four t tubes that have an adsorbent material the 3d printed mouthpiece adapter is safer and cheaper alternative for currently used silicon mask for breath analysis uh, the safer it's safer because in silicon uh, face mask uh, there are four tb tubes connected at the bottom which is nearer to the patient mouth and even it allow the mixed nasal and oral breathing uh, while a root can directly impact between uh, uh, impact and abundance of volatile cause compounds for production inside in the nasal cavity Uh, even very close proximity of uh, TD tubes to the patient mouth and nose, resulting the risk of infection because of direct physical contact with non-sterile tubes. Uh, to overcome this, the mouthpiece adapter is connected with a sampling device for a breath analysis that minimizes the risk of cross-contamination con uh, and infection between the patient because it ensures lesser likelihood of a directed uh, contact between the patient and the tubes. uh it's because uh, through the use of pulmonary function filter uh, that thus it uh, can prevent the direct contact and uh, the mouthpiece adapter is cost effective because the production of a one adapter is around uh, 4 to 8 dollars it means in indian currency uh, it's 325 to 645 rupees and uh, one silicon face mask is cost around uh, 2334 rupees and the silicon mask is only one time use product but uh, the adapter uh, 3d printed mouthpiece adapter can reuse because it have a property of an uh, sterility property uh, like an auto uh, autoclaving thank you okay the session is now open to q and a okay yeah pug 13 uh, tell me Uh, that uh, what are the applications of this adapter which uh, you think uh, will have in future um uh, uh, the applications means uh, the adapter if we use uh, in uh, sampling if the adapter is used in the sampling device the cross uh, the cross infection uh, chances would be less because uh, the td tubes here the resin and the pulmonary filter is applied 
so whatever the uh, droplets or whatever the um, air air souls comes out it will get filtered and it can be uh, sterilized by autoclaving method so we can re even reuse this so it's applicable for uh, many times and even it is applicable for a diabetic or cancer patient uh, diagnosis मतलब नॉर्मल मास्क की तरह हम यूज कर सकते हैं डू यू मीन टू से दैट अम इन फ्यूचर वी कांट बट आई एम सेइंग दिस ए दैट अडाप्टर इफ वी अटैच इट इन टू टू द सैंपल डिवाइस लाइक रिसीव अ सैंपल डिवाइस इज अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट इफ वी अटैच अ अडाप्टर टू इट सो इट्स बेनिफिशियल फॉर यूज ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू हेलो यस मैम या कैन यू कमेंट ऑन दी रेगुलेटरी क्राइटेरिया फॉर दिस थ्री प्रिंटेड सब्सटेंसेस और थ्री प्रिंटेड अडेप्टर इज एन रेगुलेटरी क्राइटेरिया um uh, regulatory criteria and what is acceptable regulatory wise um it's an uh, expectory regulatory device um because uh, the 3d printing of this model is uh, like uh, done with the help of the resins so there are three types of resins we used so i guess Okay, how will you determine how effective it is as compared to the silicon mask? Um, okay, uh, as compared to the silicon mask, uh, the silicon mask, is, as I said, it's easy for a cross uh, infection. Like if a infected patient is wearing a silicon mask, uh, whatever the breath uh, he exhaled, that uh, contamination will occur. That volatile uh, will occurs in that. Uh, but uh, if we use this uh, adapter, mouthpiece adapter. for sampling exhale uh, then uh, the contamination uh, will not happen because there are filters used even the resin is used uh, the resin uh, used uh, in different properties uh, related to stability of breath sampling purpose and uh, the pulmonary filter is used so that uh, whatever the droplets or whatever the um, exhaled breath taken by a um, infected person can't uh, be infected to the uh, healthy person if it get reused but the silicon mask can't be reused if one uh, if one person is using that mask then it's can't reuse it we can't reuse that mask okay it's only you. one time reuse reusable yeah thank you okay well so it is not cost effective am i right uh it's cost effective it's cheaper than silicon mask as i said ki silicon mask is uh, costly like around 2000 uh, rupees its range is but the uh, production of an adapter is only around uh, 325 to 645 rupees great thank you uh, well thank you judges thank you pug 13 i would now like to call pug 14 pug 14 yes ma'am One minute. We'll present a poster. The poster is presented. You can start. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, the jury members. I am PUG fourteen. The top.
to prevent calcium influx thus causing vasoconstriction and uh, what is its oral bioavailability uh, its oral bioavailability is just 15% due to due to hepatic metabolism and a slower onset of action okay so do you think that hepatic metabolism can be overcome by using buccal root uh, hepatic metabolism can be overcome uh, by a buccal root but it can be similarly overcome by the sublingual and other methods too but we found buccal as a better alternative because it gives prolonged release action okay yeah thanks thanks okay. hello yes ma'am yeah what are the standards for moisture absorption maximum how much moisture absorption should be seen uh, okay so moisture absorption or hydration rate should be 30 to 45 percent where we got 0 0.251 percent and how will it affect the buccal activity mucoidal activity Okay, so increase in the moisture absorption will uh, lead it to swell and therefore there will be efficient drug release and the polymer change in the muco other. Okay, and what are the parameters which are affecting the residence time of this tablet? The parameter wow. that affects the residence times uh, will be particle size or the amount of the polymer that has been used or the solubility enhancer that has been used. That is ingredient basically. Okay, thank you. Can I know the side effects of felodipine? Oh, uh, side effects of felodipin are probably uh, they have low bioavailability and therefore dosing need to be increased. So uh, it is 2.5 to 10 milliamg of the doses given for a day and repeated dosing is required for it. These are your side effects. Are you sure? Uh, side effects? Uh, advantages. Are you saying? Sorry, sir, can you repeat? What you have said is advantage, disadvantage of your method or are these what I have asked side effects of this drug? Okay, so fellow depend, uh, it may, uh, it may sufficient, it mother, it may sufficiently reduce the, uh, it may sufficiently cause more vasoconstriction or increase in its dose. Okay, thank you. Thus, cannot be, matlab, it is more problematic for asthmatic like patient. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, POG 17. Thank you, judges. I would now like to call POG 18. POG 18. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll present your poster. poster is presented you can start good afternoon and all present here do we know the amount of plastic we generate every year is 300 million tons out of which 40 percent is from packaging alone so we definitely need a more sustainable source of plastic that will cater to the present generation without compromising the needs of the future generation for this purpose we can use bioplastics as an alternative or a replacement of traditional plastics now bioplastics is a general term use of plastics so that either biodegradable or produced from renewable resources on an average a bioplastic uh, takes about three to six months to degrade whereas a normal plastic takes about 20,000 years to degrade the few sources from which bioplastics can be derived are mango seeds jackfruit seeds banana peels and even guar gum and many other natural resources according to the standards for bioplastics the tensile sense of bioplastics should be about 1.343 mpa according to the research conducted by uh, uns the tensile strength of the mango seeds was uh, found to be a 5.797 MPA with an elongation of break at 6%. Whereas according to another research published in the Malaysian journal, the tensile strength of the jackfruit seeds was found to be 8.16 MPA and that of banana peels was found to be 34.72 MPA. Although the study shows positive results, the major challenges faced by bioplastics are firstly, the lack of awareness related to use of bioplastics and bioplastics in general. Secondly, bioplastics are now being made only on a very small scale, so they are expensive, but this can be easily overcome by commercialization. 
to conclude i would just like to say that we cannot live without plastic so this plastic crisis should be an opportunity to push bioplastics further use of bioplastics may be challenging initially but its commercial feasibility is something that has been worked on and creating awareness into individuals about the use of bioplastic will definitely make a shift in their mindsets about using bioplastics instead of plastics thank you the session is open to question and answers yeah pug 18 yes sir can you think of a strip or blister made of this bioplastic so it's already available uh, like it is currently uh, in use as as we see at those uh, lapras like uh, in my poster i've already mentioned about those uh, laparoscopic uh, fixating it is used in wound healing these uh, strips these are self adhering strips which are used in wound healing and currently it is been implied it is being uh, still in the research state uh, it is majorly now used for hernia so the strips are already available okay and uh, any regulatory aspects related to the plastics because uh, since you have told that they are already used uh, not as a i am not asking uh, whether they are used in packaging material whether they are used as packaging material Yes, sir. So as we, uh, as you can see in my poster, the last, uh, uh, the last source that is the phytosin, uh, it is currently being used, uh, and they are trying to use it in packaging industry because it naturally has an antioxidant property, which and the antioxidant property can be increased by the use of vitamin C. So it will be, uh, and it also it is less prone to microbial growth. So it will be uh, very convenient to pack uh, any of the meat. products or any other food products in it so yes phytosin is implied in the industry currently and any regulatory challenges you have come across while doing literature yes so 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 basically uh, currently i uh, we are uh, doing a research on the same topic and we saw that there are many things that are still, still un unexplored like uh, for firstly uh, we don't know about the hygroscopic nature of few of the Uh, sources of the bioplastics for example jackfruit seeds as i came to know it it is hygroscopic because it is it is hydrophilic in nature they therefore the amount of plastic the, the kind of plastic it generates it is less water resistant but still uh, the uh, knowledge on this particular aspect of hygroscopicity is very less so i think that is one thing that they still need to explore on and uh, also sir about the commercialization as we see there are multiple advantages of using bioplastics but still as we say that they are not so in use that is just because firstly like i already said there is not much awareness about bioplastics how, how how do they work how is it manufactured and secondly sir uh, the major uh, the business of this bioplastic is majorly b2b meaning it is business to business and uh, this has to be inculcated b2c meaning business to consumer and when we do that it will get more commercialized and when it gets more commercialized it will be more useful and you know it it will be uh, less expensive and more feasible for you so these were the few challenges i came across yeah thank you thank you thank you so Uh, hello what are the ideal characteristics that you need to evaluate for bioplastics so so ma'am as i already talked about it uh, the, 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 uh, like according to the standard of bioplastic the tensile strength of a plastic of, of of any of the bioplastic which is obtained from a natural source it should be 1.343 mpa which is mega pascals or above it and it should have an elongation of break of more than at least 5 to 6% now elongation of break means when we uh, break uh, when we elongate or pull apart the plastic it breaks apart it will definitely break at some point so the percentage at it, it which it breaks is called as elongation at break so these are the minimum requirements that a particular uh, bioplastic should um, follow in order to be classified as a, a proper bioplastic and marketed examples you said it is already available right uh, so ma'am uh, it uh, it is used in um, many of the as i already talked about the laparoscopic self fixating mesh in the wound healing it is already being used in hernia for as you know there are two treatments for hernia an open mesh treatment and this 
this is a laparoscopic treatment so uh, the uh, trials are already being going on for the uh, usage of that and we can also use it in sutures it it is already being used in sutures and there are many other uh, like you know in uh, home home homeware appliances like you know in glasswares and stuff where we need uh, by bio bioplastics to be used so that is where we use it instead of biodegradable plastic okay thank you yes ma'am thank you no questions from my end. thank you thank you sir thank you pug 18 thank you judges i would now like to call pug 19 pug 19 hello ma'am okay present. am i audible yes one minute the poster is being presented you can start thank you ma'am Uh, good afternoon all i am pug 19 and today is the topic for my poster presentation is innovations in healthcare so first to start with the innovations in healthcare are the backbone of our successful capacity to fight against the various disorders there have been numerous innovations been in this field but we have today here we have broadly been classified this innovations into three categories of which the first is ai technology based innovations second is device based innovations and third is drug delivery based innovations in ai technology we have been uh, being divided this topics into three parts first that is in ai enhanced microscopes second is ai nurses and third is 3d prosthetics with voice recognition control to talk about ai enhanced microscopes they have improvised a lot or uh, improvised help us to improvise a lot in the micro visualization of affected cells and tissues to talk about ai nurses they have uh, been a uh, part as a uh, they have proved to be a boon during the covid 19 especially then comes to the device innovation so in device innovation we have been categorized it into three main uh, parts in which the first is derma clips the second one is smartphone based pacemaker devices and third is intra uterine tamponade devices in which the smartphone pace to talk about smartphone pacemaker devices they have they are among the most impressive and breakthrough healthcare technical devices which allows patients to track their health records related to heart or if the during the cardiac problems the last is to talk about is of drug delivery innovations which are, includes the wearable insulin patches microchip technologies and micro needle patches on concluding i want to tell that these innovations are the need of an hour for us to not only ensure the protection against the disorders or diseases but also it helps us to establish a refined and superior healthcare system the more varied these innovations will be the more immune will be against the number of diseases and disorders thank you very much okay this session is now open to q and a hello hello yeah uh, yes, pug 19 yeah uh, yes, any idea about uh, the patient specific dosing so like actually uh, nowadays uh, the medication would be yes. uh, patient specific yes yes so any idea yes. on that uh, no sir actually i don't have any detail idea about it but i will see to it okay any yes, idea sir. about 3d printing Yes, so 3D printable prosthetics have been uh, widely been used today to help those people who are being suffering from the disability, and they have pro uh, proved to be a boon for those people and uh, those people who are uh, who don't have who are suffering from such disability. That's why they are being yeah. used today. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Hello, hello, ma'am. Yeah, can you differentiate between innovations and invention? What is an innovation and what is an invention? Innovations, ma'am, are those or uh, which are our when we find something actually. Hmm. Sorry. Okay, and how will you standardize this variable insulin patches? Uh, ma'am, variable. Uh, I cannot understand your question. Can you please elaborate yes. a little? Yes. How how will I know how effective these insulin patches are? Variable insulin patches. 
Ma'am, actually, there is a uh, variable insulin patches are being now available also in the market, as we can say, and we have just taken an idea that they are being used as a variable insulin patches. Actually, are uh, tiny devices which are being used under your skin and which are used transdermally, and they supply the insulin to your body when it is being transdermally attached to your body. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no question. Once again, from my end, because this is seems interesting, but I have no question. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you, judges. Thank you, PUG nineteen. We will now call PUG twenty. PUG twenty. Okay. Give us a minute. We'll present your poster. You can start. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon to one and all. My topic is uh, based on the digital pharma pharmaceutical sciences, starting from the introduction that there has been exceptional increase in the amount of data, including pharmaceutical data that are generated every single day. The term big data that has acquired the increasing attentiveness in various research areas. The data driven companies nowadays show how numerous inter industries are able to profit from the massive generation of data. The term um, artificial intelligence was launched by the John McCarthy at the Dartmouth conference. The evolution of the artificial intelligence in that specific machine learning technologies in which the computers can learn and perform tasks has improved the potential of using big data in the pharmaceutical sciences. The term artificial neural networks that are biologically inspired computational models that uh, mimic the brain's ability to learn by the examples. And the term deep learning is a technique which uses the multiple level of representation that can ultimately learn very complex function. And the goal of this uh, whole analysis is that, uh, that artificial, artificial intelligence is to summarize the past, present and potential future impacts on machine learning on different areas of pharmaceutical sciences with a special emphasis on the use of artificial neural networks. Uh, the machine learning is the popular artificial intelligence uh, technique where the computers can accurately adopt or modify the action of the artificial intelligence below the sum of methods that used in the pharmaceutical science Sciences such as linear regression, ANN, KNN, SVM, DT, RF, PCA, and uh, below the tree diagram shows the classification of machine learning based on the algorithms as are classified as the supervised learning and unsupervised learning, and the based on models they are classified as the parametric models and non-parametric mm -hmm. models. Below the diagram of the artificial intelligence is the main concept in that among all AI branches, machine learning is the most currently used AI technology in the field of pharmaceutical sciences. Further in ML, there are methods such as deep learning and another method is artificial neural network that I already said. Then there are some applications in ML that has been utilized in different pharmaceutical applications from the early stage of drug discovery to the late phases of the drug development studies. As shown in you the diagram, ANN is, time is pharmaceutical. Up. Yes. Yes, from the, uh, from this analysis, I have to conclude that digitalizing ph ph pharmaceutical sciences very promising area in, in which numerous AI and machine learning technology show great potential for the development of the drugs and can be discovered and effectively employed. And the choice of this machine learning method to be implemented uh, may depend on the various factors, including the type of the data and the size of the data set. Therefore, it can be considered task specific and it is uh, likely that AI will flourish a new era of digital pharmaceutical sciences with efficient, fast and economical solutions. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Jairus, you can now ask your questions. Uh, yeah, uh, PUG uh, 20. Yes. Any idea about what is big data? Yes, sir. Big data is um, uh, there is no specific uh, definition for uh, big data, but uh, uh, the definition we, uh, Firstly, proposed by the Douglas Lane, which he has proposed the definition of three VS, which consists of volume, velocity, and veracity. But uh, after later on, it is extended by IBM to include the fourth V for veracity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. It is the it is the enormous amount of data means uh, which is easily available and accessible due to progressive use of technology and basically means it advanced computing compatibility and cloud storage. Use as a storage purpose to which we store the data. Uh, that's all from my side. 
what are the applications of machine learning in pharmaceuticals yes ma'am application sir yeah. uh, means it can be used in the drug design and discovery then pharmaceutical pre formulation and formulations then it is used in uh, drug 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 design and discovery and for the manufacture of the new drugs okay and what are the various studying parameters for machine learning what will be the various uh, components that we need to know uh, there are compo components i means it is based on the accuracy and they have mm, uh, some mm. methods that linear regression then ann means artificial neural networks then knn means k uh, nearest neighbor method then svm uh, it is a machine support vector machine by this um, some are methods that uh, we can easily uh, do the storage of the data okay thank you so uh, thank you first thank you pug20 i would now like to call pug21 thank you am i audible yes give us a minute we'll present a poster yes the poster is presented you can start a very good afternoon to all the judges present my topic is medicines from the sky drones making healthcare accessible to all introduction the world's population as a whole only has a fair access to healthcare but drones that deliver medicines can soon change that unmanned aerial vehicles have the potential for the making a huge impact in the area of logistics and transport medicines are typically lightweight but are very extremely important in the terms of impact on the health of global population thus making them these items a potential focus for the development on drone based delivery system the major goals are drones have the potential to improve the national healthcare system by connecting hospitals laboratories and patients resulting in better outcome and shorter waiting time particularly in distant and remote areas all of the major service providing applications like netmeds and pharmacy are in the clinical trial stage as they are proving that uh, they deliver the medicines to ours but if they partner with the businesses that have huge connections in the major drug stores and various locations they can begin the quickest delivery mode section which can help in providing medicines in the shortest time experimental details the given graph shows the increasing market production of drones in different countries and continents even if the 50% of the medicine delivery in emergency conditions we can end up saving a lot of lives types of drones that can help in assisting medical fields are project wing flirty e hang zip line and google drones in the end i would like to conclude that drones are a long term investment that open the door to improving the standard of healthcare delivery in remote locations they will serve as one of the main major method for providing healthcare in the last mile their primary goal for india should be ensuring that all remote areas and isolated places should get the drone service with the fastest medicine delivery as soon as possible making india a very sharp development in healthcare sector thank you thank you pg21 the question and answer session can begin sorry is there i think learn no sir i think learn sarita ma'am please go ahead yeah yes sir uh can you elaborate on the different drones that are used in medical field Uh, yes ma'am first flirty it is a drone delivery startup based of nevada it helps in delivering first aid kits and emergency medications uh, to various locations
Thank mm -hmm. you. 